You're listening to the Schlotsky's pregame show with the Creek Broadcast Team on SHN Sports, located at 492 Highway 71, right in front of Walmart. Also located at Elgin at 1131 Highway 290 East. Go to Schlotsky's.com slash Texas slash Bastrop or slash Elgin for details on catering your next event. You can order by DoorDash and have it delivered right to your house to watch the game on your own couch. That's Schlotsky's, the Austin Original Eatery. You're tuned in to the Creek Broadcast Team on SHN Sports. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, tonight to this District 13 5A matchup. This is Pistol Pete with the Creek Broadcast Team. We are live from Memorial Stadium where the Connolly Cougars and the Cedar Creek Eagles are going to face off. Both teams coming in tonight 0-2. So, who's going to break that goose egg first? We will find out in, uh, let me see, 60, 96 minutes and 16 seconds. 36 minutes showing on the clock right now in the uh, pregame warm-up as the teams are both on the field. Uh, Flying solo tonight, folks, so I'm going to do the best I can to bring you everything possible. My son, Bart, is on the video camera tonight, so we appreciate him uh, coming out and uh, giving us a hand as uh, we get ready to do battle here at Memorial Stadium. Great weather outside, a little windy coming out of the west, probably 10, 15 miles an hour. Uh, Hopefully that'll turn a little bit variable once this sun goes down. But a couple clouds in the sky, but no rain in sight. Uh, Our prayers and thoughts go to Louisiana across the the state there to uh, hopefully they fare well against Hurricane Delta. Um, If you are looking for some money to donate, uh, please contact your local Red Cross if you want to... uh, throw a little dough towards uh, Louisiana to help those folks out because they're going to need it after tonight. Back-to-back hurricanes within six weeks. It's hard to recover from something like that. So tonight we got your Connolly Cougars. We got your Cedar Creek Eagles. We are getting ready to uh, hopefully start out the way we left off Friday night against Aikens. Man, the Eagles had just an outstanding second half, unfortunately, in that losing effort, but it wasn't due to lack of effort on the Eagles' part. Uh, two... Uh, Two great uh, uh, sustained drives in the second half really brought them within shouting distance. Just the clock was not uh, clock was not on their side as uh, the time just ticked away. But uh, the first half, the Eagles kind of struggled. They uh, uh, had six drives, five of them resulting in a punt, and one was a turnover on downs. They only tallied uh, 29 plays and 63 yards, according to our uh, our stats. Uh, we don't have any official stats uh, available. That's just what we were able to keep during yes- uh, last week's game. Uh, we did, the uh, defense did fess up one safety uh, to break the Eagles onto the board uh, with that two point safety. Um, and uh, that was right at the end of Aiken's uh, sixth drive there uh, in that first half. Other than that, you know, with, with, other than Aiken scoring a couple of touchdowns. Uh, the front half of the uh, game was pretty uneventful for the Cedar Creek Eagles. But the second half, that was a different story. The Eagles uh, uh, played like they've been playing together for years. They really uh, had a solid offense going. Their defense really stepped up, and their special teams was just on fire. It was uh, it was really fun to watch. If you weren't here to see it or see it on the uh, um, uh See it on the YouTube channel on shnsports.com slash Cedar Creek, which is where we're at tonight live from Memorial Stadium on behalf of Roscoe State Bank. We'll say hello to our sponsors here shortly. Uh, the second half, like I said, was a completely different ball game for the Cedar Creek Eagles. The first drive came out, second half uh, resulted in eight plays and a touchdown. The second drive uh, in three plays they had to punt, and unfortunately a- a- uh, Aikens returned that for a touchdown. Um, that was a short punt on a, on a short field, and they fielded it right around the 45-yard line in their own zone, in the Cedar Creek zone, I should say, and they ran it back in uh, before the special teams had a chance to uh, compose themselves. On the third drive, six play, uh, Ma- uh, uh, Brooke, uh, or Brock uh, McLaughlin threw his only interception of the night, and on the fourth drive, it ended up with, with a uh, sack, and then they uh, had to punt it away. The fifth drive was seven plays, 79 yards, and a touchdown. The, the sixth drive was, was 10 plays, 78 yards for a, touch, for, a set, for a touchdown. So those are the two drives I'm talking about on how well they did uh, in that second half to, uh, uh, to cap that game off and really give them to hopefully some momentum coming into this week. I had a chance uh, to talk to Coach Hill uh, this week, and I want to tell you that last week when we started the pregame, I had some settings wrong in my computer, 
and uh, the whole pregame didn't even go out. So I'm going to play a few spots from uh, uh, Coach Hill that he uh, shared with me during an interview. And one of the questions was I wanted to know just how well uh, he was settling in with the Cedar Creek atmosphere. Well, I mean, I think I think pretty good. Um, you know, we brought brought in some coaches with me, but then also there's there's a lot of good coaches that were you know kind of remain uh, on the staff that fortunately uh, fortunately for me that I inherited, and they've kind of um, adapt kids and the coaches, and so they've done a great job. And obviously, it was weird circumstances in the beginning. I was here for a week, oh, and then, uh, and then we everything got shut down, and they didn't even meet their coaches face to face until they start. That one got cut off at the end, but he was just basically talking about how COVID affected uh, the Cedar Creek practices and or lack thereof, I should say. I'm missing one of my notebooks. Outstanding. So um, other than that, he just he was just pleased with the way all the coaches and everybody were kind of jiving together and really coming together on the same pay, uh, same page to share uh, Coach Hill's uh, philosophy. Uh, my defensive coordinator, uh, Coach Fierro, um, I coach with him at Smithson Valley. Um, no, uh, special teams coordinator. His name's Coach Brooks. He's also a guy that I coached with. Uh, and obviously, co I'm comfortable with those guys not only because I know him personally, but you know we we've, we've shared a system that we're kind of trying to model. Is, you know, they know when we're meeting on this certain thing or at this certain time. This is kind of what how we're trying to shape it. Um, and those guys. And so those are the two guys that that I had worked with before that came with me. Obviously, we've hired uh, a few more guys that. You know, I don't really know. Uh, I, I, I guess. Uh... So we also had a chance to talk to the coach about that rumor uh, that showed up in Dave Campbell's magazine about the coaches under 40 and the top 40 in the state of Texas. And this is what coach had to say about that. You know, I don't really know. Uh, I, 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 I guess uh, it was in Dave Campbell's uh, magazine and I didn't even see it or anything like that. But my wife actually showed it to me because my mom sent it to her and um, I mean, it's an honor, obviously, to be considered that. But, uh, you know, I've been around the game my whole life. And, you know, my dad's a coach. His dad was a coach. My uncle's a coach. My brother's a coach. My cousin's a coach. You know, and so very, very fortunate to work at some at some really high-profile places. And so, um, obviously, with, with Katie and, and Smith Valley and San Antonio Ray, with that comes a little bit of notoriety. And so I guess that's kind of where it stemmed from. But... So the coach uh, is no stranger to the, the coaching field. Like you said, he has a whole family uh, that has coached, and it's only right that he uh, become a head coach as well. Uh, we talked about leadership when we talked about uh, getting prepped for Aikens and uh, you know the pretty basic stuff as far as what they worked on during the week and stuff. But he was really confident that his team was really coming together underneath the new, uh, underneath the new regime at the head coach and all the new coaches, especially with the shortened preseason and or I should say springtime when there was wasn't any practices a lot of teams weren't allowed to practice but fortunately uh out here in Bastrop uh, Independent School District we were able to actually get started a little earlier I believe than like some of the Austin schools so we had that going for us as far as getting prepared for the season um we talked uh briefly on uh tonight's game and with Connolly and um we also talked about how he felt after the Aikens game and uh, this is what he had to say about that. Well, we know that Aikens is, uh, you know, they got some talent and they have some speed. And, um, and so going into the game, you know, our first priority on the defensive side of the ball was to kind of make them, try to make them as one dimensional as we could, try to stop the run as much as we could and make them uh, throw it a little bit and be opportunistic as far as trying to create turnovers and things like that. And we actually did that on the first drive of the game. I think second, third play of the game, we created a fumble. And so right off the bat, you know, we kind of uh, got a little bit of momentum right, uh, going right there off the bat. And then offensively, our, our game plan was to uh, run the football and, and get some, some throws early on that kind of get, get us in our rhythm and, you know, get some positive yards and stay on schedule and stay ahead of the chains. And at times we were able to do that, and at times, you know, we weren't. And, you know, I think the offense overall – is uh, much more productive when we do, you know, stay on schedule, when we have a positive first down and now, you know, it's second and four, second and five, second and six, as opposed to, a, you know, second 11, second 12, second and 10, stuff like that. And so our goal was to stay on schedule offensively. That way we can kind of, you know, in the second and mediums and third and shorts kind of have our full arsenal in the plays and not be 
forced to be one dimensional. Um, and again, at, at times I thought we did that. And then you know our goal in special teams was to to win the kicking game, to make to make, to make big plays. And I thought certain units of the special teams did that. Our block units have been doing an incredible job. You know, I think we blocked um, four PATs on the year out of two games that we've played. We're averaging two a game right now. Although I don't know if that streak can keep up. You know, what I mean that's a. <laughs> You know, uh, with a nine game nine game regular season, not including playoffs, that'd be eighteen block PATs. Yeah. I don't know, uh, that'd be a, that that might be a record of some kind. But uh, but our block units are doing really good. There's other areas of the special teams that we need to improve. That you know, uh, kind of one th- one of the things that we want to be known for is is paying attention to the detail, particularly in the, in the special uh, special teams area. And I felt like there was a few crumbs left on the table in the special teams department uh, overall in some of the units. So. Uh, but like you said, I mean, I think credit to our kids. You know, uh, we started out, um, you know, not, you know, obviously we would have liked to have started faster, get points on the board uh, a lot quicker than that. But uh, credit to our kids of going in halftime, listening to the adjustments, and, you know, credit to the coaches for kind of seeing some things and figuring out what we needed to kind of uh, to do in the second half. And I thought we came out in the second half on both sides of the ball and played much better. And the kids played with great effort even though um, you know we kind of traded punches back and forth and it would have been very easy to you know when they answered a touchdown or something like that to kind of get down but they uh, they responded very well and their effort was great and you know there's mass uh, vast improvement from game one to game two and that's really all you can hope for so a great take from uh, just the observations he had uh, with the uh, with the Eagles during that Aikens game, and they were able to work on some of that stuff this week in practice. After I met with them yesterday uh, for the same interview, uh, turn a little crowd mic, a little background noise there. So. so we also had an opportunity to talk about everything he evaluated during the Aikens game what how he was going to uh, transform that or how to move that over to uh, Conley tonight and this is how that happened well I think just overall getting more comfortable you know there's a lot of guys that um, you know uh, this is their second time playing under the lights on a Friday night and some guys even though they have experience might not be necessarily in the position that they had played before so I think you know our our message to them this whole time is you know it's not going to happen overnight we got to get better each week and and I think that they particularly in the second half saw that that hey we are starting to mesh a little bit hey um, you know if we uh, just in, especially coming in on Saturday and watching the film and realizing how many plays on, on all three phases of the game offense defense and, and the kicking game how close we were to creating big plays you know we weren't very far off and so uh, particularly that Saturday when we brought them in we watched the film I think uh, we were able to kind of identify that hey we're close, you know. There and uh, you know yeah there's there's a few plays here and there that kind of define the game and but overall just understanding that within all the moving parts within a single play, you know the difference between for example on offense a two yard run and a twenty five yard run is one little thing, you know, and everybody's got to do their job on each and every play and you never know when your job is going to be the one that makes or breaks a play and so I think that uh, in all three phases we were able to identify particularly on film on Saturday morning they were able to watch you know just how close we are to and then there's flashes of it on in all three phases as well when when we did when those little bitty details were paid attention to that's when we had really successful plays in all three phases so I think the most exciting thing for us as coaches and and the players is us understanding that we had improvement from game one to game two we had improvement from the first half of game two to the second half of game two and then coming in on Saturday and seeing that hey we can we can do even better than this and and just uh and and they're going to grow in experience and 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 uh and get better every week and I think that you know we're excited as district approaches, you know, like I told the team over the weekend, we could have tried to gone out and schedule two games where they were easy wins, and so we feel good about ourselves going into district and everything like that, but that might have created a little bit of false sense of uh, security there, and so I'm glad we played the teams that we did, and I'm glad that obviously we would like to have won, don't get me wrong, we, we would love to be 2-0 and right now, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it let us do a lot of evaluation, and that's one of the things that, you know, kind of gets overlooked in the, in the whole 2020 COVID era is we weren't really able to have spring ball. We weren't really able to 
do a whole lot during the summer. And so there's still a lot of evaluation going on. And there's still a lot of learning going on that typically would have been done previously. And so, but the kids are doing a fantastic job of, of studying, watching the film, taking it from the film room to the practice field and then from the practice field to the game field. And I feel like, uh, you know, our goal is kind of cliche to get better every week. I think they're taking that to heart. And I think, I think we're taking steps in the right direction. So I asked the coach coming off of that, uh, that great second half of, uh, of the Aikens game, uh, I asked him how he was going to go ahead and get ready for Connolly this week, uh, being the same record. And uh, this is what he had to say with this. Connolly, uh, Connolly is very athletic. You know, they've uh, they got a lot of speed. Uh, they got a lot of guys that, you know, that scare you in the sense of, you know, you can do everything right, but, um, you know, you look up and, and, you know, they got athletes all over the field that can just go make plays. And so uh, they scare you in the sense of that. And so, and, and obviously their uh, coach Cecil has been there a while. And so they're very comfortable in their schemes and, and, uh, and what they do. And, and so, um, you know, they, like I said, they're only two, they played two good teams and, uh, you know, Austin High that, that they played last week, um, you know, obviously has a very prolific offense. I think the quarterback of Austin High has committed to UT. Oh, wow. And so, um, you know, he he's tough for anybody to handle. And um, and so we're expecting, you know, just like week in and week out, you know, it doesn't matter who we're about, we're expecting, you know, to go in there and got to play well to win. And so, um, and again, that's the approach that we have with our kids. And they know that, that, you know, that the biggest game of the year is the next game. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter whether we're playing – Connolly or Brenham or Rouse or Bastrop last play last uh, last game of the year you know like we said earlier you know period eight of Tuesday's practice is going to be the same as the previous week's two, uh, Tuesday period eight practice and so again just kind of uh, taking it one game at a time and I know it sounds cliche but um, you know I, I'm very pleased with the way that we finished off obviously would we have liked to have won both or at least one of those games in non-district sure sure we'd be lying well, I just realized that part of that uh, part of the interview actually uh, repeats itself, and I'll uh, have to brush up on my editing just a little bit. But nonetheless, he's looking at a at a comfortable start to tonight's game, and hopefully the Eagles will come out and uh, bring our uh, bring the second half that they had against Aikens out to Connolly tonight. So just to kind of uh, go over some other stats uh, from last week's game, uh, number sixteen, uh, Brock McLaughlin, uh, the Cedar Creek quarterback. Uh, the first half went 6 for 10 for 43 yards, no touchdowns and no interceptions. Uh, for the whole game, he went 15 for 23 for 144 yards, two touchdowns and that one interception. And uh, he carried the ball 13 times for a total of uh, 37 yards. Number 19, Davin Winston, is a, really breath, a real breath of fresh air in the backfield. He's helping out Dominique Mojica back here this year, and uh, he's looking at uh, – uh, really doing well as far as uh, moving the ball. It kind of adds another uh, element to our running game of not only that uh, straight-ahead bulldozer up the middle like Dominique is uh, uh, notorious for, but Davin has the, the speed and the quickness to make those cuts, to find those holes, to get those extra yards. He actually carried the ball nine times for 57 yards, and his longest was late in the second half. Uh, was 35 yards, and uh, he had one rushing touchdown to cap off the Eagles' drive on that last uh, that last drive of the game. Dominique Mohican, speaking of him, uh, seven carries, 26 yards. His long was 20, and that was late in the second half. Uh, on receiving side, uh, number seven, Aiden Prince had you know, he caught five passes for 73 yards for two touchdowns, and. Uh, Damian Perez, uh, number 11 for the Eagles, six passes, 55 yards. What really stood out was the special teams, and uh, and on top of that, uh, Damian Perez was very instrumental on those special teams. They used him on the outside uh, as the uh, point after uh, uh, blocker and also the uh, the punt blocker, and has, has been very successful in the last couple of games. He had two blocked uh, point afters and then one blocked punt. Uh, as well. I'm not sure if I, I, I take that back. I'm not sure if he had all those, but the defense had two block uh, kicks, and I think he had both of those, and somebody else had the block punt, and uh, we, were, we weren't able to come up with any interceptions. So to round it out, it was a very uh, a successful second half, and the coach was very pleased um, with the way the Eagles played and kept their composure. And like I told the coach, from our point of view up here in the press box, it was. Uh, 
it, it was fun to watch because they were able to start a drive deep in the opponent's zone and go 79, 80 yards and top it off with a touchdown. They were able to sustain those drives, which is uh, something that the that, that was has been very difficult here in the past seasons uh, for the for the Eagles. Um, but nonetheless, if we'd had one more quarter to play, I can't help but think that we would have came out really close to being on top. But you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, nonetheless. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a short break, and uh, we'll be right back after we uh, listen to a couple of our sponsors. This pregame show is brought to you by Schlotzky's Deli, Austin Eatery, located right here in Bastrop and in Elgin. Uh, Bastrop location is 492 Highway 71. Uh, they are open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday, so seven days a week. You can even order through DoorDash at 512-332-2867 and have your meal delivered to you right to your house and never even have to never even have to leave. Everybody's staying home and staying safe because of COVID. Uh, www.slotskis.com slash Texas slash Bastrop for the Bastrop location, and that would be slash Elgin for the Elgin location, which is located at 1431 Highway 290. In Elgin, DoorDash also available same hours, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. So I'm Pistol Pete from the Memorial Stadium getting ready for this 13-5A showdown. District opener tonight, Conley Cougars and the Cedar Creek Eagles. We'll be right back. Tired of the usual? Slotsky's is the only place to get the original toasted sandwich with made-from-scratch sourdough buns. Come in today and treat yourself to a one-of-a-kind sandwich experience. Schlatsky's Funny Name Serious Sandwich. Hey folks, did you know for over 22 years, Fast Drop Stone and Material Supply has been the go-to for professionals and DIYers to use for all their landscape projects. Established in 1998, the family-owned business has served Bastrop and surrounding areas with the quality, affordable landscape materials that they deserve. Their huge selection of materials will help you drive that creative side of you to help you create that dream landscape. For more information and details, visit BastropStone.com or call Jaime or Gabby at 512-303-5060. It's Bastrop Stone and Material Supply. Our reputation is rock solid. Thinking about building something? The Roscoe State Bank in Bastrop has money to lend for your project. Whether it's commercial or residential construction, the lending experts at the Roscoe State Bank can get you the funding you need to get the job done. Drop by the Roscoe State Bank at 710 Highway 71 West in Bastrop, right in front of Home Depot. Roscoe State Bank is an equal housing lender and a proud supporter of the Bastrop ISD and Cedar Creek Athletics. Roscoe State Bank member FDIC. If you would like to become a sponsor with the Creek Broadcast team on SHN Sports, reach out at the Creek Broadcast Network at gmail.com. That's the Creek Broadcast Network at gmail.com. It's an extremely inexpensive way to reach hundreds, even thousands of people. Contact us now to see what we can do for you. Are you a play outside the box kind of person or just looking to unleash some pen up aggression or maybe just celebrating a divorce? Whichever it may be, I have the perfect place for you. Uncharted Adventures, formerly 512 Rage Room, located in Kyle, Texas at 395 County Road 202, building 17B, right outside Kyle on FM 150. It has a huge smash room, four axe throwing targets with a bar and lounge area for you to relax. You can smash and destroy anything from TVs, computers, glassware, furniture, even cars. It's great fun for the whole family. And coming soon, a two-lane shooting gallery. Check them out at UnchartedAdventures.com for details or call 512-537-3113. Ask for Damon, Trace, Sarah, or Denise. Book your next Uncharted Adventure now. That's Uncharted Adventures. They are the house of untraditional entertainment. At Roscoe State Bank, we're more than just banking professionals. We're your neighbors. Family owned, the bank first opened its doors in Roscoe, Texas in 1906. Since then, we've expanded to new locations, including Bastrop. We strive to be the best neighbor possible to those we serve, offering great products, the latest in mobile and online banking, convenient hours and more, all with the highest level of customer service because that's what neighbors deserve. Roscoe State Bank, building community one neighbor at a time. You are listening live with the Creek Broadcast Team at SHN Sports. All right, welcome back to Memorial Stadium. The Eagles uh, and the Connolly Cougars tonight, 12 minutes 
12 and a half minutes showing on the clock uh, as the teams have yet to come out of the locker rooms. The cheerleaders are in place. The tunnels are inflated on both ends for uh, the Cougars and the Eagles. The cheerleaders are cheerleading. The Eaglettes are getting ready to do their Eaglette stuff. And uh, let's go over the starting lineup tonight for the Cedar Creek uh, Eagles. I don't have the starting lineup for the Connolly Cougars. Uh, we're going to have to kind of do that as we go through the game once we figure out who is uh, who's actually playing. So out on defense, we are uh, looking at uh, left tackle. Trevor Hall is going to start us out. Left guard is going to be Alex Handy, number 72. Uh, A.J. Senior is going to be our senior uh, center tonight. He was out last week. Uh, Deuce Cutshaw is going to be our right guard. He uh, actually took the center duties uh, last, uh, last game for... Uh, for the Eagles uh, um, because of uh, Senior being out. I'm sorry. Uh, right tackle, Lorenzo Briones, number 55. And then number 12, Devin Wemhoff is our tight end. Um, in the Looks like on the uh, linebacker side, we have... Wait a minute, that was the offense I just read off. Boy, I'm just batting a 1,000 tonight. Let's go ahead and just finish off the offense. In the backfield, we have Dominique Mojica and Davin Winston. Quarterback tonight is going to be Brock McLaughlin. And our receivers are going to be Damian Perez, number 11, Josh Roberts, number 3, and Aiden Prinz, number 7. And now for the defense. At end, it's going to be Aiden Gustafson. He's wearing number four. And at tackle, it's going to be Willie Rangel, number 51. He actually had a really great game last week. He put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. In fact, I think he was even responsible for a sack or two, um, if not uh, a half a sack. He was uh, did really well getting into the backfield for the Eagles. Uh, tackle is going to be Jerry Torres as well. And we got and at one end, we have uh, Logan Latouf. And linebackers, we have Marco Portillo, number 30. We have uh, Ian Denton Croft, number 27. And Jafar Johnson, number 32, also had a good game last week against the Aikens Eagles. Our corners uh, on defense are going to be Davin Winston. And the safety position is going to be Jose Hernandez. Our special teams player of the week is safety Henry Jones, number 10. And he is playing safety as uh, as well as corner as Damian Perez wearing number 11. So our captains for tonight are going to be number 24, senior Zane Zimmerman, number 50, senior Logan Latouf. He's a defensive end. And number two, Patrick Gwynn is a senior, and he is a wide receiver. I see the Connolly Cougars coming out onto the field, getting ready to occupy their tunnel. Eagles still have not been out yet. The coaches are out. There are a couple of the coaches are out, and uh, right next to the booth to me, Tonight is uh, the, the Cedar Creek coaching staff calling the plays from up above. And uh, like I said before, out on the camera, operating our video tonight, it's going to be my son, Barton, and uh, we thank him for being here tonight. So, um, like I said, for the Connolly Cougars, we're not really sure who uh, who's starting yet, but um, we're going to go ahead and, and get that as we, uh, as we go. <coughs> Our kind, Mr. Uh, ben Clark calling out some PA stuff here in the also, in the stadium. Memorial Stadium does not allow in and out privileges during the game or an after. Lots of regulations and rules for the whole COVID thing. Unfortunately, uh, unable to buy tickets here at the box office. Everything's available online. Um, so go to bisd.com. For any future games, it's too late to buy a ticket for tonight's game. They're trying to keep numbers uh, under control as far as uh, knowing how many people are let in because we're only limited to a certain amount. The Cedar Creek Eagle Band is here tonight. They have a limited amount as well due to all the COVID stuff going on. Um, I did have a, a small conversation with Coach Hill earlier uh, yesterday during our interview that uh, I asked him how, he, how it was working out with how the, the, you know, because you have some kids that are still at home doing virtual learning, but at the same time, they're coming to football practice to uh, participate in the, as much as they possibly can, but they're staying out of the classroom, whether it be uh, just, I don't know the reason, just various reasons, I imagine. But uh, nonetheless, um, he, he said it was going, he said it was going pretty good. He said there's been some uh, interesting 
uh, techniques that they're having to implement to keep those kids up to speed. Um, so it, it's it's been it's been kind of unusual because those are the those are the kids that are virtual learning aren't able to come down to the to the field house or uh, to the field at certain periods of the day to uh, to work on stuff like the other kids that are actually in school do. So it makes it challenging for the coaching staff to make sure everybody's on the same page. The Eagles are making their way out of their locker room. It's like they're going to be let out by number two. The captains tonight is going to be Patrick Wynn and Zane Zimmerman and Logan Latouf. Uh, one is carrying the Eagle War flag. One is carrying the uh, the Almighty American flag, and one is carrying the Texas flag. And they will soon, as you can see on the video, if you're watching it. The cheerleader of the week was Taylor Godfrey. Week two last week, October the second. The cheerleader of the week was Ashlyn Taylor. And for tonight's game this week, the cheerleader of the week is Brooke Gertz. Brooke Gertz is your cheerleader of the week. Good for her. Congratulations. So the Creek broadcast team is going to try to bring every game to you. This season, uh, normally I have a partner in uh, the booth with me tonight, but he had some last-minute uh, obligations that uh, were out of his control. So he, um, uh, I'm up here tonight doing this myself as the, uh, the colors make it to the east end zone and the color guard getting ready to post the colors at center field at, 50, at the 50-yard line as the Connolly Cougars make their way out onto the field. Eagles are getting pumped up, getting ready to come out. Awful quiet out there. I need some crowd noise, people. All right, big banner showing up out there. Big uh, says the boys of fall do it all. And we're going to see what the Eagles can do tonight against the Connolly Cougars as they get ready to bust the banner. Roughly five minutes left to go in the pre pregame warmups. As soon as both teams make it on the field, they'll line up and they will post the colors for the national anthem. Looks like the cheerleaders and a couple of other adults down there helping hold up that banner. That's a big one. It's kind of windy out here, so it's kind of like flying a kite in a hurricane. And here comes your Eagles. All right, your Eagles are on the field. Let's hope some enthusiasm carries over. As we get ready to start in this 13-5A Division II district opener, the Cedar Creek Eagles and the Connolly Cougars. Bastrop Bears were in action last night. They played against, um, did they play against? I got that right here. They played against Rouse in their district opener, and they dropped a big one to Rouse. Uh, Rouse 50, Bass Drop 17. So, haven't had a chance to see Bass Drop this season. Not sure how that well they are, um, uh, how well they're, well they're stacked up. But you know, we'll find out soon enough as we play them the last regular season game uh, in the, what used to be called the Gold Out game. We know there's no Gold Out this year, so uh, nonetheless, it's just the last game of the season as the band plays on. My crowd mic's in a different spot tonight, so we're gonna have a hard time picking up the band. <clears throat> and now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the middle of the field for tonight's coin toss. The captains for tonight's game for Connolly, number 33, Tejon Clark. Number 33, Tejon Clark is going to be your... And for Cedar Creek, number 50, Logan Latouf. Is your captain for the Connolly Cougars. Yeah. And so Logan Latouf and uh, Tejon Clark 
are at midfield with the referee getting ready to do the coin toss. We're going to see what happens here momentarily. Seems to be, looks like Cedar Creek is going to defend the west end and uh, Connolly will defend the north end. And Cedar Creek uh, looks like they lost the, well, I don't know if they lost the toss or not, but I think Connolly won the toss and he deferred to the second half because the Eagles are going to receive as uh, to start this game out, but not until after we post the colors. And we're going to take a, a short pause here and listen to the national anthem as we respect the flags as they're posted at midfield. As we honor our great nation, the United States of America, with the presentation of colors and the playing of the national anthem. This evening's color guard is being provided by the Bath Drop High School Navy Junior ROTC unit. Under the direction of Captain Chris Fletcher, United States Navy retired, and Chief Petty Officer David Canales, United States Navy retired. The color guard on the field is commanded by Cadet Lieutenant Zavala and is assisted by Cadet Seaman Santiago, Cadet Lieutenant Commander Holder, and Cadet Senior Chief Pickering. At the south end of the field raising the colors, Cadet Chief Petty Officer Vasquez and Cadet Chief Petty Officer Greenlaw. Once the colors are presented, the playing of the national anthem will be performed by the Cedar Creek High School Band. We ask, ladies and gentlemen, that you remain standing until the colors have vacated the field. All right, folks, welcome back to Memorial Stadium tonight. Your District 13 5A matchup between the Cedar Creek Eagles and the Connolly Cougars as the colors made it off the field. The crowd shows their respect for their home team.
as we get ready to go, it looks like the Cedar Creek Eagles are going to receive. So assuming the Connolly Cougars won the toss and deferred to the second half, so the Eagles are going to have an opportunity to strike first. I'm going to tell you, folks, watch the video. Uh, this is a chance that we're having uh, UIL lifting the uh, rules a little bit, so we have the opportunity to film live, video live, uh, Friday Night Lights, which in the past has not been allowed. So due to COVID and all people staying at home, the UIL has uh, has uh, raised that rule. So the video is uh, it's a very strong possibility that it may be here to stay. We may be doing this from now on because uh, rumor has it the UIL was thinking about doing that anyway. As the Connolly Cougars get ready to tee it up, number 17 is Justin Santos. He lets a nice little logo Going to be picked up at the six or 17 yard line, going up the middle. Oh, not far to go. Gets up to the 30. Uh, that carry on the ball, I believe, was number uh, number 19, uh, Davin Winston, for the Cedar Creek Eagles. Again, the Eagles will be first and 10 with a bass drop signs, first and 10 from the 30 yard line as we get started underneath. Friday night lights, beautiful weather outside as the Eagles come to the to the offense. Brock McLaughlin looking to get stuff started. Got Dominique Mojita Mejica in the backfield. And we also have uh, Davin Winston in the backfield. One receiver top, one to the bottom, one goes in motion. Waiting on the snap. There's the handoff of Mojica. He goes up the middle over the 30s, carrying the crowd all the way up over the 35 to the 36 yard line where it's gonna be second down and four. As Dominique starts out on the positive side, had a little difficulty last week starting out at, all, at Aiken's line. I, I think I failed to mention that Aiken's team last week that we played, that we played so well against in the second half, is a 6A team, and their starting quarterback stayed in the game the whole night. So uh, they, they played well against a, a big 6A team. Shotgun position, two setbacks, two receivers split, one top, one bottom, playing off that left hash mark. Here's a snap. McLaughlin hands it off to Mahika again. He's got running room. He's over the 40, the 45, the 50. He's going to go. He's going to go. He's at the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Cedar Creek Eagles. What a way to start, Dominique Mohica. A 63, 64 yard run, second play of the game. What a way to start the Eagles as they get on the board quickly. Two plays, 70 yards as that started at the 30 yard line. Two plays, Dominique Ojico with a 64 yard run to top it off. There's a point after, it's on the way. And Henry Jones, number 10, puts it through as the Eagles go on top quickly, seven to nothing. Catching the Connolly Cougars on their heels quick here in the first quarter. That score coming within a minute, 53 seconds into the first quarter. Cedar Creek closes out the first drive. Two plays, 70 yards, topped off with a 64-yard run by Dominique Mojica. What a beautiful, beautiful run by Dominique Mojica as the ball is going to be kicked away here shortly. Outstanding start for the Eagles. Wow, that just that just that takes that that puts the wind in my sails. Don't take it out. So here come the Eagles and uh, Connolly Cougars looking to strike back as Henry Jones going to tee it up at the 40-yard line for the kickoff. Needs the ball and the referee brings it out to him. So two plays, both plays by Dominique Mojica. So Dominique Mojica already has 70 yards to his uh, credit in the first less than a minute of the game. And here's Henry Jones and balls on the way. Nice kick up the left side. That's gonna be brought in about the 15 yard line. Starting up the right side. He's gonna be met quickly, still on his feet but forced out of bounds before the 30, about the 28 yard line. Hard to see all the way across the field on who that was, but nonetheless, that ball was brought at the 15.
for about a, nah, let me see, Tim, about an eight, 19 yard return. No, I'll take that back, a 14 yard return. All right, starting out for the Connolly Cougars. Got the referees holding up the game just a little bit for a second as the Eagles switch around their defense. I'm trying to see who's at the helm for the for the uh, Connolly Cougars. Waiting on the snap, one goes in motion, shotgun position, hands it off in the middle, and a little bit of a hole gets up over the 35. Ball's on the ground, possible fumble. They're scrambling for it. Whistle finally blows. We're seeing who's going to come up with it. Reminiscent of last week's game as they forced a fumble on the Aikens. Looks like Connolly's going to rekey, going to keep it, and the ball will be marked at the 37-yard line. So that's going to be a seven-yard pickup. In the backfield, I don't need my binoculars here in a second. I can't see that far. Looks like number five is the quarterback for the Connolly Cougars. Oh, he's going to get caught behind the line. Number five is Jordan Hardiman. Oh, that's not a five. That's an eight, folks. I told you I was blind. Let's see what we got. I don't have a number eight on my roster, so I have no idea what that young man's name is. In the backfield for the Connolly Cougars, we have number 10 and number 20. Number 10 is Ramon Mason, and number 20 is Demetrius Gardner. There's a snap, high snap. He's going to control it. He's going to get brought down behind the scrimmage line of scrimmage again. Eagle defense is swarming as it takes another loss. That's going to take him all the way back to the 37-yard line. It's going to be third down, and it looks like 12. I don't know who that quarterback is, folks, and I apologize, but he's wearing a number that is not on my roster, and I so apologize. One goes in motion, shotgun position, one set back, two split to the near side. He's going to throw it out there. Nobody there. He slips on the cutback. That pass intended for number one, McAnthony Everest, and that's going to be incomplete pass, and that's going to force a fourth down and 11, and well, the board's throwing third and 11. Trying to see where the down markers are. Oh, it is okay. The down marker is showing third and 11. I thought that was four plays, but it's third down and 11. 9.30 to go in the first quarter. Eagles on top, 7 0. Here's the snap. Looking for the screen pass. Oh, and that ball is going to be passed way behind the line of scrimmage on a screen setup. That pass was uh, made to number 20, Demetrius Gardner for Connolly Cougars, but for a loss. And that's going to take it all the way back to the 30, 32 yard line for another loss. So it's going to be fourth down and 17 with nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Back to punt four. The Connolly Cougars is number seven, Joseph Wynn. Standing on his own 20. Looking for some penetration here. Oh, nearly blocked by number 24, the Eagles. That ball is going to come down at the 44-yard line. Takes a Connolly bounce all the way inside the Eagles zone. Right down smack on top of the 30-yard line where the Eagles will start with a bass drop sign first and 10. Seven to zero, Cedar Creek on top. With a quick, uh, with a quick strike, two plays by Dominique Mojica for 70 yards. As the Eagles start first and ten from the 30-yard line. There's a snap. McLaughlin hands it off. Oh, and he's met immediately right at the line of scrimmage. He's going to get forward progress and make the line of scrimmage. That ball. Handed off to Dominique Mojica, and he's going to get the draw. But uh, nonetheless, no gain on the play. Second down and 10 from the 30-yard line. Senior, number 76 over center for the Eagles. Two setbacks. Brock McGoffin shotgun position. Two receivers to the near side, left hash mark. That ball's handed off again to Dominique Mojica. And didn't seem like he got much traction as he may have slipped and ended up losing a yard on the play. It's going to be third down and 11. Mojica 
So Dominique Mojica so far with the carries to start the Eagles out. 7.31 to go here in the first quarter. Eagles on top, 7 to 0. Shotgun position, one setback. Two receivers split near side. Left hash mark. McLaughlin rolling out to the right. He's looking to throw. He's got a little running room. He's going to get one launch. He's got a receiver, and he brings it in outside the 40-yard line for an Eagle and a Bastrop signs first down, and the Eagles move the chains. That's going to be an 11-yard strike. So it looks like number 11, Damian Perez. First down, Eagles. As the Eagles are first and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Shotgun position, two setbacks. Tight formation, playing off the right hash mark, moving left to right. McLaughlin rolls out to the right. Oh, he's being chased down by the Conley defense. Oh, and he's going to go down hard and long, and he's going to go all the way back to the 26-yard line. He's going to lose 15 yards on that play. It's going to be second down and 25. So second down and 25 from the 26-yard line. Eagles got some territory to make up. Shotgun position, waiting on the snap. Showing blitz on the Connolly side. Handoff up the middle. He squeezes past the line of scrimmage. Bounces up to the 28-yard line where it'll be third down and about 22. Actually, 23. Two yards on the play, chiseling back at that 15-yard loss on that sack. Eagles, shotgun position, one setback, two to the near side, one to the top side. There's the snap. McLaughlin looking to run. He's got a little space, and he's going to get dragged down as the play. It's just not getting time to develop. The offensive line that played so well against Aikens uh, last week is uh, starting out a little sluggish this first quarter as this Connolly Cougars. as the Connolly Cougars uh, are making penetration fairly quickly, fairly easily. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. There is a snap, and a punt's on the way. It's gonna be a low bowler, and that's gonna get shanked out of bounds right around midfield as McLaughlin doesn't net too much on that one there. It looks like they're gonna give them the Connolly 45 yard line where it'll be first. And 10 for the Connolly Cougars. Connolly three and out last time, last uh, series. Actually went backwards, so they're minus like, uh, actually they're about even right now. Started out with seven yards and then uh, lost seven yards. So it's a uh, snap. Straight to Demetrius, number 20. He's got a little running room. Gets up over the 50 to about the 49-yard line. It's going to be second down and about four. Demetrius Gardner on the carry. It's second down and four from the 49-yard line into Eagle territory. 4.32 to go in the first. One goes in motion, waiting on the snap. Number eight fades back. He's under pressure. He's going to go ahead and launch this. The duck is a goose, and oh, job. A great chance for an interception, but instead it's going to end up being pass interference on the Eagles all the way, way back at the 27-yard line. If I think if they just would have turned around and realized that it was a wounded duck of a throw, that would have been easily picked off. But there's a late flag, and it looks like it's going to be pass interference. On the Eagles, waiting on the final call. Dominique Mojica playing double duty tonight in the Eagles secondary. Gets flagged for the penalty. That's going to move the ball all the way up to up to the Eagle 34-yard line.
First and 10 for the Connolly Cougars. There's the handoff. Don't know he's gonna fake the screen pass out to the left side. He's got a little bit of running room. Number 10 for the Connolly Cougars up near the first down marker. That's Roman Mason with the catch and the carry. Picks up eight yards on the pass. Second down and two for the Conley Cougars from the Cedar Creek 26. Shotgun position, one setback. Two to the near side, left hash mark. One goes in motion. There's a snap, a rough snap. Oh, and it's going to get talked behind the line of scrimmage as that handoff is to Demetrius Gardner. And he's got nowhere to go as he's swallowed up by Logan Latouf. And Aiden Guftison for the Cedar Creek Eagles. And they're going, he's going to lose, looks like two on the play. <laughs> Conley shotgun position, one goes in motion, waiting on the snap. It's going to be a quick pass out to the left side and a screen pass. Got some running room. He's up over the first down mark, still on his feet. Finally tackled, brought down at the 15-yard line. 16-yard line, but it's going to be a Connolly first down on the screen pass with Dimitri Gardner, Demetrius Gardner with the reception. It's going to be first and 10 for the Connolly Cougars. 2.41 to go in the first. One goes in motion. Here's the snap. Screen plat pass out to number one. Oh, he's got nowhere to go, and he's going to get tangled up, and he's down for a loss. Ooh, a late hit, but no flag on the play. That pass caught by number one, Anthony Everest, but nowhere to go, and he's actually going to go down with a minus two loss. It was going to be second down and 12. It'll be second down and 12 from the Eagle. 18 yard line. Team on SHN Sports. Shotgun position, two setbacks, waiting on the snap. It's a high snap off number eight. That's at the, uh, handed off to Demetrius Gardner. Gets a little bit of a back all the way up to the Eagle 13 yard line. Looks like he's going to pick up five on the play. This is the seventh play of this drive starting out at the 45 yard line in the Connolly territory. Penalty kind of helped them along a little bit. A pass interference by Dominique Mojica. Waiting on the snap, one goes in motion. There's the snap, hand off to Demetrius. No, yes, off to Demetrius guard off the right side. He's got nowhere to go and he's gonna get caught behind. Oh, he's still on his feet. He switches field, he's coming back the other way. He's got a little running room. And he's going to get drug out of bounds. It looks like about the five yard line. The play went all the way to the right side and came all the way back to the left side. And it looks like he had a, has enough for the first down. It's gonna be first and goal for the Connolly Cougars. He ran about 90 yards to make up five or six. The, Conley Cougar first down. There's going to be a timeout on the play. Looks like that timeout is going to be charged to the Conley Cougars as we take a short break. Press box being brought to you tonight by Bastrop Stone Material and Supply, located on 1433 Highway 71, right here in Bastrop. www.bastropstone.com or at Bastrop Stone on Facebook. Call 303-5060. Talk to Jaime or Gabby for all your landscaping and masonry needs. They have everything you could possibly need to beautify that yard of yours. This is the Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply Press Box tonight, brought to you by Roscoe State Bank. It is our title sponsor for the season. Rick Womble over there at the Bass Drop location, 710 West Highway 71. All right, first and goal for the Conley Cougars. One goes in motion, waiting on the snap. 
Up to Demetri Gardner. He gets a little run room, gets over the five, inside the five. It looks like they're going to mark it at the four. It'll be second down and goal. Picks up two yards on the play. Second and goal for Conley Cougars from the four-yard line. Cedar Creek needs to make a stand. 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Eagles on top, 7-0 to zero as of right now. There's a snap, sends one in motion. Waiting on the snap. That was kind of a weird... This one's kept by number eight, and he's going to get swallowed up before the goal line. And the ball's loose. It looks like Cedar Creek may have it. The whistle is not blown, and that ball is... Cedar Creek football, what a great defensive play just to hold the Connolly Cougars as the fumble is picked up by Cedar Creek and the ball placed at the three yard line with 19 seconds to go in the first. So the Eagles stifle the Connolly threat inside the red zone. First and 10 is Bastrop signs first town for the Cedar Creek Eagles after the fumble. Wow, that was a, a nine-play drive on the Connolly Cougars only to come up empty with a fumble as the Eagles recover it. Brock McLaughlin brings his offense back on the field with Dominique Mojica in the backfield. Damian Perez on the near side, top side, I can't see that far, I'm blind. That ball handed off to Dominique Mojica. He stumbles a little bit. He's going to bumble. He might get the line of scrimmage. Looks like he got back to the three-yard line where it'll be second down and ten. And that's going to end the first quarter as the Eagles will have to switch ends on a 97-yard walk all the way down to the other side as Coach Hill is down there to greet them with a smile on his face. And we're going to take a short break. We're going to take a short break. a little premature. Sorry about that. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come right back. This first quarter brought to you by Uncharted Adventures. Are you a play outside the box kind of person or just looking to unleash some pent up aggression or maybe just celebrating a divorce? Whichever it may be, I have the perfect place for you. Uncharted Adventures, formerly 512 Rage Room, located in Kyle, Texas at 395 County Road 202, building 17B, right outside Kyle on FM 150. It has a huge smash room, four axe throwing targets with a bar and lounge area for you to relax. You can smash and destroy anything from TVs, computers, glassware, furniture, even cars. It's great fun for the whole family. And coming soon, a two-lane shooting gallery. Check them out at UnchartedAdventures.com for details or call 512-537-3113. Ask for Damon, Trace, Sarah, or Denise. Book your next Uncharted Adventure now. That's Uncharted Adventures. They are the house of untraditional entertainment. I'm in a state of caffeination, got all my fingers shaking, must have been my large Americano, mochaccino, macchiato, now the family's gone to bed, and that's my favorite time to get some tips on better rates, cause my state farm guy answers late, and even when it's not my agent, someone's standing by, so patient, getting coverage questions answered helps me to relax. Ah, oh, there's a get flag to start that flag, sorry state to cut that farm. short. All right, starting out the second quarter. It's a penalty flag on the play. Looks like a false start on Cedar Creek. It'll be half the distance to the goal. So the ball will be placed on the one and a half yard line. All right, McLaughlin waiting on the snap. Hands it off inside to Dominique Mojica, he bumbles and stumbles up towards the five yard line. Looks like he's gonna get a couple yards back up to the three, maybe up to the four. Depends on where they mark it. Looks like the three yard line. As unlike the last game against Aikens, uh, the Eagles have only been to the air once uh, so far. Uh, they're depending on the ground game to try to stabilize the passing game later if they need it. Shot, uh, shotgun position, one setback. Standing in his own end zone, McLaughlin looks to the sideline for the play change. Calls the audible, 11.24 to go in the first half. And that's going to be a timeout called by Coach Hill as the time was running down on the play clock. And they're going to have to make sure that Brock McLaughlin's on the same page. Thank you for the 
best seat in the house. This timeout is brought to you by Blue Chip Beer, a double scoreboard sponsor of the Eagles and BISD Athletics. Positions Premier is located on Highway 71 in Bastrop, and they have all the equipment you need for any emergency you may run into. Positions Premier, proud sponsor of BISD Athletics and the Cedar Creek Eagles. Timeout's over. Shotgun position. Brock McLaughlin gets the snap. He's looking to throw. He's going to air one out that right side. He's got a receiver. He's caught! Oh, no! Bumbled and stumbled in and out of the hands of Damian Perez. Was the intended receiver. He almost had that one. But number 11 for the Connolly Cougars, Eloy, or Eloy Cisneros, got a hand in there to break it up. So it's going to be fourth and long as McLaughlin's going to have to Going to have to punt it away, standing on his own end zone, on his own end line. So short, short punt for uh, for the Eagles here. Ball snapped and gets it away. It's a nice low one. It should take a good Eagle bounce, and it does all the way up out of bounds at approximately the 39-yard line where the Connolly Cougars will start first and 10 with a short field. On the McLaughlin, I would say from where he started, that was probably about a 40-yard punt net. As the Connolly Cougars will start first and 10. So that's the first three and out for the Eagles as they were able to stop the Connolly Cougars with that fumble recovery on their own, their own three-yard line to stop that drive, but Connolly, looks like we got a new quarterback in place, number 17, that I have a number for, Justin Santos, I have a number for that one, he takes the snap, there's a pitch forward to, I can't see who that is, like number 10 maybe, and he bumbles and scrambles out to the right side, inside the 35, that ball, yeah, that was carried by number 10, Roman Mason. Looks like number 17, just a, Where'd he go? Justin Santos has a little more confidence than that last quarterback was in. That was number eight, the mystery player. I have no idea who that was, but Santos in now. One set back, two to the top, one to the near side, right hash mark. One goes in motion, waiting on the snap. There's the snap, handoff in the back. No, he's going to quick screen. Oh, nice play by number 24, the Cedar Creek Eagles. That's Jose Hernandez. Incomplete pass. That pass intended for... Number seven, I believe, as he was the one that went in motion. That's going to be an incomplete. But Joe Jose Hernandez was right there to meet him right when he caught the ball to force the incomplete pass. Third down and four. Here's Santos. He's looking to throw. He's going to go out to the right side. He's got a receiver in first down territory. Up to the 25-yard line, Connolly will have first and 10. That's going to be a, about a six-yard reception. By Roman Mason. First and 10 for the Cougars. From the Eagle, 25-yard line. Shotgun position, two setbacks. One goes in motion. There's a handoff to the backside, and he goes up the middle, and he's met by a sea of blue jerseys, and he's going to get five yards out of it all the way up to the 20. It's going to be second down and five. I didn't see who carried that. I think it was 10, wasn't it? All right. Santos, shotgun position, one setback to the near side. Left hash mark. He sets one in motion. There's Mason. Hands it off up the middle. And he gets up near the first down marker, but it's going to be short by about two yards. Looks like he's going to get the 17-yard line, so it's going to be third down and two for Connolly.
All right, Santos in the shotgun position. You got Demetrius Gardner in the backfield. One goes in motion. It's third and two. There's the handoff. He's got the first down. Oh, he's met hard at the 15-yard line, but not before he gets over the first yard marker, or first down marker, all the way up to the, looks like the 14-yard line where the Connolly Cougars will have first and 10. Well, the Conley Cougars are moving it. They're moving on their sixth play of this drive. Santos sends one to more in motion, hands it off to Demetrius again. No, he keeps it this time. Oh, and he's going to slide, and he's going to pick up. Let's see where they mark him on his, where his bottom hit. Looks like about the 13-yard line. He's only going to pick up one yard on the keeper. Picked up one yard on the play. Second down and nine for the Connolly Cougars. Seven minutes, 25 seconds to go. Eagles clinging to a 7-0 lead on a two-play drive by Dominique Mojica for a 73-yard total, or a 70-yard total for that touchdown. There's Santos. Oh, he's hit right at, the, right at the time he releases the ball. He is hit by Logan Latouf, and that ball is going to come up short, and that's going to bring up fourth down and nine, I believe. Or third and nine. Third down and nine. Incomplete pass. I didn't see who that was intended to or intended for. But Logan Latouf with deep penetration rushing Santos to get rid of it quickly and comes up short. Santos shotgun position, one setback. That's Gardner. Two split, or one split to the top, two to the bottom. One goes in motion, waiting on the snap. He's looking to throw. He's got one right in the middle. That ball's high and away. That's going to bring down fourth down and nine as Santos let it go. The intended receiver on the outside there. As soon as he turns, I'll be able to see it. Okay, come on. There you go. Number two for the Connolly Cougars. Shaquan McGee was the intended receiver. Good tight coverage. That could have been disastrous if the ball had been a little lower because the receiver or uh, the uh, defense was in behind the receiver so they're going to go for it santos fourth down and nine from the eagle 13 yard line one setback waiting on the snap one goes in motion santos with the ball he's looking to throw he's under pressure he scrambles out to the right side. He's looking to throw. That's going to be thrown way over the head. And that's going to be a turnover on down as the Eagles will take over first and 10 with a Bastrop signs first down from the 13-yard line as the Connolly Cougars turn over on down. T-O-D. You are listening live with the Creek Broadcast Team at SHN Sports. All right, the Cedar Creek defense comes up big again. Stopping the Connolly Cougar drive. That was eight plays that ended up in a turnover on downs as McLaughlin drops back. He's looking to throw. He's going to air one out. He's got a receiver and nobody there. I'm not sure who it was that was intended to. But we had Dominic per or da uh, Damian Perez and Joseph Roberts, or Robert Jones. What's, his, what's that guy's name? Number eight, or number three. Josh Roberts, yeah, that's what I thought. Josh Roberts, that ball was intended for one of those two guys, but it fell right between them. Seemed like uh, one of them maybe just didn't finish the pattern like they were supposed to, but Rock McLaughlin is showing again that he's got an arm. He aired that one out about 35 yards without any effort, hardly. Shotgun position, one setback. He's got Davin Winston in the background. Two receivers top side, two to the near side, right down the middle of the field, playing right to left. There's a snap. McLaughlin's going to keep it. He's got a little hole up the middle. He's got some running room. Oh, he breaks the tackle. He's up over to 25, to 30. He's still going to 40. Brought down about the 44, right at the 45-yard line. Brock McLaughlin. That was a nice run by Brock McLaughlin as he picked up, I don't see how many yards that was. He started, it looked like about 22 yards. Nice piece of run and broken tackles. To get where he is, first and 10 on a bass drop signs, first down from the 45 yard line, still in Eagle territory. Brock McLaughlin, one setback, sends one in motion. 
One to the top side, two to the near side. McLaughlin looking to throw again right up the middle. Oh, and that ball is slapped out of the air, nearly intercepted. That ball intended for Josh Roberts right across the middle, just a hair too high, allowed the defense to get an arm in there and knock it away, and that was an incomplete pass. It's going to be second down and 10. Actually, it should be third down. No, it's second down and 10. My bad. They got a first down. What am I talking about? All right, to the ball. Josh Mc or Brock McLaughlin, shotgun position. He's got two setbacks. He's got Winston and Mojica in the backfield. Two receivers split, one top, one bottom. Here goes Mojica in motion. Hands it off to Winston. Oh, and he's met immediately. And he's going to get thrown for a loss of about two yards. It's going to be third down and 12 as he loses two yards on the play. Damian Perez comes into the game. McLaughlin goes to the sideline to get the... to get the play, they come up, break huddle. Shotgun position, McLaughlin waiting on the snap. Fakes the handoff, he rolling out. Got a screenplay going pass here going here. He can just let it go. There's a Josh Roberts catch. It takes a nice little hook move, and he's going to get a first down all the way up to the Connolly Cougar 34 yard line. McLaughlin. McLaughlin to Josh Roberts. Picks up 23 on the pass. First down, a Bastrop signs first down from the Connolly Cougar 34-yard line. 5.25 to go in the first half. Eagles up 7-0 still, and they're threatening. Here's uh, McLaughlin, rolls out to the right. He's got one. Oh, just out of the reach of Josh Roberts again. Incomplete pass. Brings up second down and 10. Looks like McLaughlin is not afraid to throw it now, as I was saying, right? As I was saying, they were keeping it on the ground to try to establish the passing game, and here comes the passing game. 5.19 to go in the first half. McLaughlin has the play coming across. 18 seconds on the play clock. Ball resting at the 34-yard line on a near hash mark. Eagle still clinging to a 7-0 lead. McLaughlin waiting on the snap. Two receivers near. One goes in motion. That's Mojica. McLaughlin, he keeps it. He's got a little running room. Goes up the middle. He's up the 30 to 25. He's got some room to the goal line. Oh, look at it. Turn on the speed. Touchdown, Cedar Creek. Brock McLaughlin from 34 yards out. Wow, what a great play. He saw that middle open up. The offensive line did what they were supposed to do and took Brock McLaughlin to the promised land. 13 to zero, Eagles go on top. Point after pending as Henry Jones comes in to see if he can stay perfect on the year. He is four for four thus far, three for three last week against Aikens. Waiting on the snaps, a low snap, it's up. Oh, and he's gonna miss that one, I jinxed him as that went underneath on a bad snap and a bad hold, a really low snap, and Jones just couldn't get a foot under it. And that's gonna keep it 13 to zero. Cedar Creek with 5-12 left to go here in the second quarter. Eagles putting it together on a seven, eight play drive for that 34 yard run by Brock McLaughlin to seal the deal. Henry Jones coming up short. Wow, what a start for the Eagles. All right, 13 to zero, Jazz. Henry Jones gets ready to tee it off at the 40. Capped off on a seven yard play, or seven, I'm sorry, seven play drive as Brock McLaughlin takes it home for six, uh, 34 yards on 
a, uh, a run that opened up like the great divide up the middle. Offensive line doing a great job making that happen for McLaughlin. 5-12 to go in the first half. Eagles on top. Looking to go start this district season out uh, right for the Eagles as Jones gets ready to let it loose. And that ball's off up the left side. That ball's going to be grabbed to the 14-yard line and quickly met by a sea of blue at about the 25. Nowhere to go. Looks like about a, oh, what is that, about 11-yard return by number 20, Demetrius Gardner. And they're going to start first and 10 from the Cedar, from their own, I'm sorry, their own 26-yard line. 5.06 to go in the half. Eagles up 13 to 0. Man, I shouldn't have said anything. I think I jinxed Henry Jones on that point after. Santos waiting on the snap. Hands it off to Gardner. He's got nowhere to go. He's met quickly. He gets up over the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's going to pick up two on the play as the Cedar Creek Eagles close the gap quickly. It's going to be second down and eight as one of the Eagle players, looks like Logan, gets up a little gingerly. He's going to come out, and number 24 for the Eagles is Zane Zimmerman, one of our captains for tonight. He's coming in to give him a rest. We'll get Logan back in there as soon as we can. Second down and eight. Santos waiting on the snap. He's looking to pass. He's going to air one out. He's got it wide open. That ball is incomplete. Great defense by number 22, Dante Love, to break that play up. He had position and brought it together to cause the incomplete pass. Going to bring up third down and eight with 4.25 to go. Great defense on our secondary to knock that pass down. Santos waiting on the snap. One goes in motion, two top, one bottom. He's looking at the screen, hands it out to Gardner on the left side. He's got a little bit of running room, bounces off his own player. He's going to get enough of the first down, I think, or did he get shoved out of bounds? It looks like he's going to make the first down all the way up to the Cedar Creek 37-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 as he picks up 12. Oh, he picks up nine on the play. I look like more than that. <clears throat> All right, first and 10 for the Conley Cougars, starting at the, our own 37-yard line. Shotgun position, one setback. One goes in motion. There's the snap. Fakes the handoff. He's going to be under trouble. He's going to go down. He's going to go down and does not get back to it. And that ball is going to be a sack accredited to number 22. Dante Love coming up big. I take that back. It's going to be number 32. Jafar Johnson coming up big. That outside linebacker position. That's going to send him back two yards. It's going to be second down and 12. As Santos just couldn't get rid of it. Shotgun position, one setback. One goes in motion, two to the near side, one to the top. Left hash mark. Here's a snap kind of high. Brings it back down, hands it off to Gardner. Gets up back to the original line of scrimmage, but he's met quickly and drove back, but forward progress is going to get him the 39-yard line, so he's going to pick up about five on the play. Maybe four. So third down and eight. 3.16 to go in the half. Cedar Creek defense is playing very well up to this point. Great penetration, great focus on the ball to follow the, follow the handoffs and to get to Santos on a couple of occasions. Here's the snap. Santos looking to throw. He fades back. Oh, and that ball's going to be whistled dead for some reason. That might be a false start on the Conley Cougars or else they wouldn't have blown it dead. So false start. False start on number one. McAnthony Everest. I didn't see the play as far as the false start, but nonetheless, it's going to take it back. A five-yard penalty back to the 34-yard line. Five 
Third and 13, 254 to go in the half. The Cedar Creek up 13 to zero, two to the near side, one to the top. One setback, Santo shotgun position, waiting on the snap, sends one in motion. He had, fakes the handoff, he's looking to throw. Oh, and that ball's gonna be too high as he just put, he's got some, he's got a good arm, maybe a little too good because his receivers are getting the position that they need to get in. He's just overthrowing them and that's another incomplete pass. And that's gonna bring up fourth and 13 as the Connolly Cougars are probably gonna be forced to punt unless they're thinking about going for it. They went for it last time on fourth and long. So Santos is back in the punt formation, standing on his own 22-yard line. There's the snap, and he's going to let it go, and that's a good little punt, and it's going to come down, and that's going to be fielded. Oh, and that ball's fumbled. Where's the ball? Get on the ball, Blue. And Cedar Creek luckily brings it in as the punt was tried to be fielded by Damian Perez, bounced off his chest, so it was a wild egg there for a minute, but it was able to recover it. But uh, not to before he bumbled it all the way back to the 25-yard line where it will be a bass drop signs first and 10 with 2.40 to go in the half. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see what Brock McLaughlin can do with a short two, four, two minutes and 40 seconds starting at their own 25-yard line. Shotgun position, two setbacks, two to the near side, one to the top. Takes the handoff, Dominic Mojica turns the corner and he bumbles and stumbles to get back to the line of scrimmage. So that'll be no gain on the carry. It'll be second down and 10. Thirteen to zero. Here in the second quarter, Cedar Creek with the ball with a little over two minutes to go. In the first half, shotgun position, one setback. Switches over to the left shoulder. McLaughlin with the ball, rolls out to the left. He's looking to throw. Oh, that ball's nearly intercepted by Connolly, number three, Averill Houston. Almost came up with it. that pass intended for number three, Josh Roberts. Gonna bring up third down and 10, 154 to go. As the Brock McLaughlin brings the play in from Coach Hill. I'm not quite sure what's going on with uh, the coaches in the booth and down on the field. I'm not sure how many plays they're actually calling in or how many plays Coach Hill's actually calling. Uh, still trying to figure that part out. It's not something I necessarily get into during interviews as McLaughlin fades back to throw. Oh, he's trying to get rid of it. Oh, and he just has to throw it away. That pass in the vicinity of number three, Josh Roberts. And that's going to be a three and out for the Cedar Creek Eagles. As McLaughlin will be forced to punt from his own 25-yard line. A minute 47 to go. Back deep for the Connolly Cougars is number 10, Roman Mason, standing on his own 41-yard line. McLaughlin standing on his, his own 15, waiting on the snap. And there's the punt. It's going to be a nice low squibbler. It's going to take a Cedar Creek bounce, and Mason's going to let it go. It's going to dribble over the 40 down towards the 35, and it looks like it's going to go out of bounds at about the 37-yard line where the Connolly Cougars We'll start first and 10 with a minute 38 to go in the half. All right, first and 10, Connolly Cougars from their own 37-yard line, moving left to right, far hash mark. Got one setback with Demetrius Gardner. That number eight's back in the game again. I'm not sure what his number is. 
or what his name is. And here's the snap. He's looking to throw. He's got three receivers. He keeps it, goes up the middle. He's got a hole, gets up over top of the 39 to the 40-yard line. He's going to pick up three after that scramble. And we got a player down, uh, getting up a little gingerly. Cedar Creek player has Jeremy Tarks and other trainers come out to tend to him. We're going to take a short break. You're listening to the Creek Broadcast Team on SHN Sports, live from Memorial Stadium. Uncharted Adventures is the house of untraditional entertainment. From a smash room, axe throwing, a bar and lounge, and an area coming soon, two lanes of airsoft shooting gallery for the kids of all ages. We are growing to expand your untraditional entertainment. For details, go to unchartedadventures.com or at Uncharted Adventures on Facebook to book your next adventure. That's Uncharted Adventures, the home of untraditional entertainment. This segment is brought to you by Uncharted Adventures. Go to unchartedadventures.com for details. All right, welcome back to the Bastrop Stone and Material Supply broadcast booth located right here in Bastrop on Highway 71 at 1433 Highway 71. And there's Santos back in the game. Oh, he's got a reception. That pass intended for number 88. Jamari Twidwell. And that's a complete, and that's going to be uh, first, just enough for a first down as he gets it all the way up to the 30 or 47 yard line. That's going to be a, a first down for the Connolly Cougars. First and 10, one minute to go. Santos back in the game after being out briefly. He's in the shotgun position. 12 seconds on the clock. For some reason, he's hesitating. I'm not sure what's going on. The referees. Looking to the sideline, eating the clock up for some reason. All right, had to reset the play clock. That's what they did. It was already running and it hadn't started to play yet. And now it's running shotgun position, one setback. Here's Santos looking to throw. Oh, he's already get tangled up. He's being under pressure. He's got nowhere to go. Oh, and he's clobbered. And that ball's intercepted. He's bringing it back. That's Damian Perez. Gets to over 30. He's got a little bit of running room. He breaks the tackle. He's at the 20, the 25, inside the 10. Damian Perez with the INT gets it all the way back to the Conley Cougar 10 yard line. Santos was under pressure by the defense and he had to scramble and let that thing go. There's a little bit of a wounded duck, but nonetheless, it was intercepted by Damian Perez and it'll be first and goal for the Cedar Creek Eagles with 39 seconds to go at the Conley Cougar 10 yard line. That is a bass drop signs. First down, Damian Perez with the ticket. He got that ball at about the four, probably about the 35, 37 yard line right in there and ran it all the way back. About 47 yards to the 10 yard line. Actually, that'd be 57 yards. If my math is correct, which it usually isn't. All right, first and 10, McLaughlin. One set back with Dominique Mojica. One to the top side. Single coverage sends Damian Perez in motion. McLaughlin rolls to the right. Has a little resistance. He's got to get rid of it, but he's going to get taken down. There's a flag on the play. Probably most likely going to be holding. As McLaughlin was scrambling for his life, the play just didn't develop. He's got to make a decision of whether he's going to run or he's going to throw because that in-between thing just ain't working as he comes up about six yards Okay, they threw a flag for a possible ineligible person downfield, but that was that flag's picked up. So he's just going to be thrown for a loss. Looks like the ball's all the way back to the 16-yard line, so it's going to be second and goal from the 16 as he uh, tried to scramble to make something happen, but just nothing developed. So we're going to minus six on that, and the Cedar Creek Eagles take a timeout to try to get another tally before halftime as the Eagles are up 13 to zero with 33 seconds left to go in the first half. The test is for the Eagles is really going to be in the second half. If they have, they have to come out and instead of, instead of playing not to lose, they're going to need to play to win. They're going to need to come out just as aggressive and just as tough in this second half to uh, combat these uh, Conley Cougars. And uh, they don't want uh, playing preventive football is not going to be the ticket 
for uh, for the Cedar Creek Eagles. And uh, what little bit I know about Coach Hill, I really don't think that's his, uh, his game plan. So we will just have to wait and see how the Eagles come out the second half as they break huddle on the timeout. 33 seconds left to go. It's going to be second down and goal from the 16-yard line after Brock McLaughlin lost six on that play. He's got one setback to the near side, one to the top. Dominique Mojica waiting on the snap. He's looking to throw it. He's in a little bit of trouble. He's got a hole. He's going to run to the outside. He's being ran down by two. Oh, that could be a horse collar. No flag on the play. Oh, there's a flag on the play. That's a horse collar. It's going to be called on Conley Cougars. He grabbed him by the collar of the shirt and pulled him down. It was kind of gentle, but nonetheless, it was the collar. And I believe that's what the call is going to be with 23 seconds on the clock. That should put us... That's a personal foul all the way up to the one yard line if that's the foul. We're gonna see. Okay, they waved it off. They picked the flag up, so there's no penalty on the play. So it's gonna be third down and goal from the 14 yard line as McLaughlin picked up two on that. All right, two to the near side. Shotgun position, one setback. Dominique Mojica. McLaughlin takes the snap. He rolls out. He's got a little bit of time. He's going to throw it. Oh, and that ball, that's broken up. That pass intended for Josh Roberts in the end zone. But that ball's broken up by number 88, Jamari Twidwell. And it's going to bring out fourth and 14. And Henry Jones is going to come in and try, to try a field goal with five seconds left on the clock. The ball will be placed at the, or the ball will be, the ball's at the 15, or 14, the ball will be placed at the 21, so it's going to be a 31-yard field goal attempt by Henry Jones with five seconds to go, waiting on the snap. Oh, and there's going to be a timeout called by Cedar Creek. That's going to be the last one of the half for Cedar Creek as they're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about it too, or we'll be right back. This second quarter brought to you by Uncharted Adventures, or I'm sorry, this second quarter is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Lori Tuggle, agent, right here located at 815 Highway 71, Suite D, 512-581-3939. I'm in a state of inundation from an endless iteration of discounts that State Farm gives to me. Good driver and good student, multi-car and all the rest make up a veritable litany. They got a list of discounts longer than my arm. Get to a better state, stay farm. Henry Jones went out on the field to pick up the field goal tee. So let's see what's going to happen here. Looks like the Cedar Creek Eagles have changed their mind. That timeout, uh, they decided to discuss a little bit. And, you know, what's the what's the worst that can happen? We could have came away with three points or we might come away with a touchdown as Brock McLaughlin is going to give it a stab. Shotgun position. He's fading back. He's under pressure. He's going to have to scramble. And he's going to get brought down. And that's going to end the half on a minus one for Brock McLaughlin. That's no big deal. We'll take that. And your Cedar Creek Eagles 13, your Connolly Cougars 0. It's halftime here at Cedar Creek, and the band and the Eaglets and the cheerleaders will be on the field shortly. But in the meantime, we're going to take a short break. You're listening to the Creek Broadcast Team on SHN Sports live from Memorial Stadium. This is Pistol Pete. Hey, friends, if you're looking to beautify your home or create that perfect backyard getaway, Fast Drop Stone and Material Supply has been a family-owned business since 1998. Located at 1433 Highway 71 West of Fast Drop, they're open Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Because whether you're a professional or a DIYer, it is the only stop to make for all your masonry and landscaping products you will need to make that dream happen. It's all at Fast Drop Stone and Material Supply. Whether to create that perfect patio, that outdoor kitchen, fire pit, garden, or beautiful rock home, Fast Drop Stone and Material is your one stop you need to make for all your natural landscape materials. Visit FastDropStone.com or find them on Facebook for more details. Call Jaime or Gabby at 512-303-5060. Fast Drop Stone Material Supply. Their reputation is rock solid. 
I'm in a state of caffeination. Got all my fingers shaking. Must have been my large Americano mochaccino macchiato. Now the family's gone to bed, and that's my favorite time to get some tips on better rates. Cause my State Farm guy answers late And even when it's not my agent Someone's standing by so patient Getting coverage questions answered Helps me to relax Get to a better state, State Farm Hey folks, if you're needing signs, banners, business cards, stickers, vehicle wraps, political propaganda, and anything else that needs to be printed, the Bass Drop Signs and Banners are the people you need to see. Located at 248 Highway 304, Bass Drop, Texas. 14 years in the community, the family-owned business continues the path of quality and affordability. Go to BassDropSigns.com or call 512-332-0803 for details. They want you to remember that we print it all. Uncharted Adventures is the house of untraditional entertainment. From a smash room, axe throwing, a bar and lounge, and an area coming soon, two lanes of airsoft shooting gallery for the kids of all ages. We are growing to expand your untraditional entertainment. For details, go to unchartedadventures.com or at Uncharted Adventures on Facebook to book your next adventure. That's Uncharted Adventures, the home of untraditional entertainment. The award-winning Bass Drop Signs and Banners. Bass Drop's original large Flat print shop bringing you quality and affordability to the sign printing industry. With 14 years as a family owned business, Bass Drop Signs and Banners continues to impress the community with four Best of Bass Drop awards. When it comes to quality craftsmanship, honesty, and integrity, there is no compromise. They are Bass Drop's only five star rated print shop. Bass Drop Signs and Banners, located at 248 Highway 304, Bass Drop, Texas, or you can find us at BassDropSigns.com. You can call us at 512 332 0803. You can talk to Tim, Maria, or Matt to get your order started. Bass Drop Signs and Banners, we print it all. I'm in a state of caffeination, got all my fingers shaking. Must have been my large Americano mochaccino macchiato. Now the family's gone to bed, and that's my favorite time to get some tips on better rates. Cause my State Farm guy answers late And even when it's not my agent Someone's standing by so patient Getting coverage questions answered Helps me to relax Get to a better state, State Farm The Roscoe State Bank strongly supports the efforts of the Bastrop Chamber of Commerce and its We Believe in BISD campaign, which unites the community and local businesses in support of the Bastrop Independent School District. Bastrop and Cedar Creek Schools have great teachers helping great kids achieve great things. At the Roscoe State Bank, we do believe in BISD and in its mission to provide pathways with pride and purpose for all of its students. Find out more at webelieveinbisd.com. Hey friends, if you're looking to beautify your home or create that perfect backyard getaway, Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply has been a family-owned business since 1998. Located at 1433 Highway 71 West of Bass Drop, they're open Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Because whether you're a professional or a DIYer, it is the only stop to make for all your masonry and landscaping products you will need to make that dream happen. It's all at Bass Drop Stone Material Supply. Whether to create that perfect patio, that outdoor kitchen, fire pit, garden, or beautiful rock home, Bass Drop Stone and Material is your one stop you need to make for all your natural landscape materials. Visit BassDropStone.com or find them on Facebook for more details. Call Jaime or Gabby at 512-303-5060. Bass Drop Stone Material Supply. Their reputation is rock solid. Bass Drop Signs and Banners is a proud sponsor of Cedar Creek Football and the Creek Broadcast Team live on SHN Sports. All right, back here at Memorial Stadium, we've got the Eagleettes on the field. We'll tune in and listen to them just a little bit. Folks, i got to be honest with you, getting all these stats together by myself is going to be a little difficult, but I just want to let you know that Cedar Creek is up 13 to nothing over the Connolly Cougars on a great half by, uh, by Brock McLaughlin. Uh, Dominique Mojica uh, responsible for one score uh, for uh, two plays, 74 yards, 70 yards. Right. And uh, Brock Great McLaughlin uh, responsible for uh, the other tally now, on a 34-yard run the field, the there towards the uh, middle of the second quarter. 
So the Eagle Hut's finishing up, and here comes your award-winning Cedar Creek Marching Band, band also known as the Creek Sound. And we're going to turn this up and listen to the band a little bit. Our guard member of the week is Olivia Jones. The band section of the week is the saxophones. The band member of the week is Sean Bettis. This week, the band would like to thank the Cedar Creek High School Band Boosters for supporting us in all that you do. Tonight, we will present the first movement of our 2020 production, Journey of Man, with music by Richard Saucedo, drill by Hunter Doogie, and choreography by Hernan Mendieta. After we finish the music, get on your feet and clap along to the Cedar Creek High School fight song. Thank you. 
All right, there's your Cedar Creek marching band with the Cedar Creek fight strong song to finish out the halftime show. 13, 14 minutes, we'll call it, left in the in the halftime. So uh, lots of time to just sit here and stare at the field. Uh, looks like Brock McLaughlin went about four for nine that first half. But the running game was established early and then stifled a little bit, but then the passing game picked up. But nonetheless, the Eagles on top of the Connolly Cougars, 13 to zero to start district play here at Memorial Stadium. So we're gonna hope to see the, the Connolly Cougars, or I'm sorry, the Eagles to come out and sustain that second half and uh, put some more points on the board as uh, I tell you, so far so good. I like what I'm seeing when it comes to the Cedar Creek offense and especially the defense. Uh, special teams is a little, um, little short tonight as far as uh, plays, but nonetheless, uh, we got a whole half of football to go and we will, um, soon find out as they look to continue this uh, this strive to a victory here to start out district play. This broadcast is brought to you by Roscoe State Bank in affiliation with SHN Sports. Live from Memorial Stadium, our booth uh, press box sponsor is uh, Bastrop Stone and Material Supply located right there at 1433 Highway 71 right here in Bastrop. Uh, Lori Tuggle Agency is our second quarter sponsor. She's located right there at 815 Highway 71 West, Suite D. Uh, you can contact her at lorituggleagency.com or 512-581-3939. Bastrop Signs is our first down sponsors located at 248 uh, FM 304 here in Bastrop. Uh, BastropSigns.com. Uh, Bastrop Signs is uh, 14 years. Uh, Family-owned business is the only, uh, is, is the first original large format print shop in Bastrop uh, at Bastrop Signs on Facebook. You can call Tim, Maria, or Matt over there at uh, 512-332-0803. And of course, our title sponsor, Roscoe State Bank, located at 710 Highway 71. Go over there and see Rick Womble. He's the vice president. He'll set you up if you're looking for a car loan, you're looking for a home loan, uh, you're looking for a line of credit. Uh, Roscoe State Bank is there to, uh, to meet all your financial needs. Unchartered Adventures is our first quarter sponsor. They're located at 396 County Road 202, building 17B, B like boy, in Kyle, Texas. They're out there off of FM 150 uh, between 21 and I-35. Uh, UnchartedAdventures.com for all your details if you want to book a session. It's really a cool place, guys. It's a, it's a smash room, so if you want to get into smashing stuff, like if, you have a, if you've always had a, 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 an inkling to uh, smash like a 60-inch flat-screen TV, well, there's the place to go. Instead of smashing your own, you can come over here to Uncharted Adventures and smash one of theirs. Um, they have furniture. They have, uh, I mean, anything you can think of that you'd want to break. You know, if you want to bring a picture of your ex-husband or your ex-wife and smash it, you can do that. <laughs> they'll let you do that. As a matter of fact, they'll even take a video of it for you. Uh, but that's Uncharted Adventures at Uncharted Adventures on Facebook or UnchartedAdventures.com. Uh, call and book your session with Damon oh, uh, right over there. And, of course, our pregame show and our postgame show is brought to you by Schlotsky's Deli. It's an uh, original Austin eatery. First location is in Bastrop, 492 Highway 71, uh, right here in Bastrop in front of Walmart. They're open from 8 to 10, Monday through Sunday. That is seven days a week. You can call and order on DoorDash, and they'll bring it right to your home, or your office, uh, wherever it is, so you don't have to go out and get it. Uh, the DoorDash will get it to, uh, to you safely and keep you safe at the same time. 512-332-2867 is Schlotsky's. You can go to schlotsky's.com slash Texas slash Bastrop or if you want the Elgin location you can put uh, Slotsky's.com slash Texas slash Elgin and uh, they're located at 1431 Highway 290 East in Elgin. Same phone number and uh, I take that back. That's a different phone number. The Elgin location is 512-285-2867 and uh, they are open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. as well. Continued sponsors uh for the Creek Broadcast Team, Schlotsky's and uh, Roscoe State Bank, State Farm Insurance. Uh, our new sponsors this year are Bastrop Stone Material, Bastrop Signs, and uh, Uncharted Adventures, and we welcome everybody aboard. If you're looking to 
sponsor the Creek Broadcast team. You can give me a call at 512-461-5527, or you can find me on uh, the Creek Broadcast Network at gmail.com, and we can figure out some kind of advertising uh, package for your business to get you the coverage and the exposure that you need uh, for a very, very reasonable price. So that's uh, the Creek Broadcast Network at gmail.com if you're looking to uh, get your name out there. So 8.30 to go in the halftime. Uh, not a lot going on because the bands for the visiting team, uh, UIL made it the rule this year that they are not to travel just to try to keep everybody safe. Um, the Conley Cougars have some fans over there. I don't know, so I would say probably maybe pushing 100, maybe a little less. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, they made the trip to come see their kids play and give them as much support as possible. The Eagles, they're pecking in pretty good considering all the social distancing going on here in the stands. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there is a, there's a few hundred people here easily. That's not even including the band. Sometimes the band makes up for half the people here. <laughs> Normally we march about 120 kids, but due to all the COVID stuff and the virtual learning and all that crazy stuff going on uh, with the pandemic, uh, we have about 70 committed kids. So that's why during your halftime show it looks so small out there. As the Conley Cougars are making their way out of the locker room. Haven't seen the Eagles yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back with your uh, with your second half kickoff, kickoff, cookoff, kickoff, and uh, we'll be right back. Tired of the usual? Schlotzky's is the only place to get the original toasted sandwich with made from scratch sourdough buns. Come in today and treat yourself to a one of a kind sandwich experience. Schlotzky's. Serious sandwich. Hey folks, did you know for over 22 years, Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply has been the go-to for professionals and DIYers to use for all their landscape projects. Established in 1998, the family-owned business has served Bass Drop and surrounding areas with the quality affordable landscape materials that they deserve. Their huge selection of materials will help you drive that creative side of you to help you create that dream landscape. For more information and details, visit BassDropStone.com or call Jaime or Gabby at 512-303-5. 5060. It's Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply. Our reputation is rock solid. Thinking about building something? The Roscoe State Bank in Bass Drop has money to lend for your project. Whether it's commercial or residential construction, the lending experts at the Roscoe State Bank can get you the funding you need to get the job done. Drop by the Roscoe State Bank at 710 Highway 71 West in Bass Drop, right in front of Home Depot. Roscoe State Bank is an equal housing lender and a proud supporter of the Bastrop ISD and Cedar Creek Athletics. Roscoe State Bank member FDIC. Are you a play outside the box kind of person or just looking to unleash some pent up aggression or maybe just celebrating a divorce? Whichever it may be, I have the perfect place for you. Unchartered Adventures, formerly 512 Rage Room, located in Kyle, Texas at 395 County Road 202, building 17B, right outside Kyle on FM 150. It has a huge smash room, four axe throwing targets with a bar and lounge area for you to relax. You can smash and destroy anything from TVs, computers, glassware, furniture, even cars. It's great fun for the whole family. And coming soon, a two-lane shooting gallery. Check them out at UnchartedAdventures.com for details or call 512-537-3113. Ask for Damon, Trace, Sarah, or Denise. Book your next Uncharted Adventure now. That's Uncharted Adventures. They are the house of untraditional entertainment. At Roscoe State Bank, we're more than just banking professionals. We're your neighbors. Family owned, the bank first opened its doors in Roscoe, Texas in 1906. Since then, we've expanded to new locations, including Bastrop. We strive to be the best neighbor possible to those we serve, offering great products, the latest in mobile and online banking, convenient hours and more, all with the highest level of customer service because that's what neighbors deserve. Roscoe State Bank, building community one neighbor at a time. You are listening live with the Creek Broadcast Team at SHN Sports. All right, back here at Memorial Stadium. Uh, Eagles slowly but surely trickling out of the locker room. At least I thought they were there for a second, but the Conley Cougars are already back on the back on the field. There's about four minutes left to go. In the halftime, the officials are on the field, stretching out, doing some kind of weird thing down there. And uh, 
the Eagles are putting a last second uh, preparation plan together to come out and hand it to the Connolly Cougars here this second half. So I'm sure there might have been some conversation being a fly on the wall from the Connolly locker room. Um, I would think this, some of it was uh, you're a great quarterback and you have a great arm and you need to bring it down about 300 feet because your receivers can't catch it when it's five feet above their head. I was thinking that probably had something to do with it. But nonetheless, the Connolly, don't, don't count them out. I mean, they're a, they're a strong athletic team, so we're looking at uh, we're, we're not we're not counting Conley out at all coming out this second half. So some minor adjustments is all they have to make to uh, to make this a game. As uh, if the Eagles are going to uh, hold off the Conley Cougars, they're going to need to come out just as strong and tough as they were in that first half. They're going to have to fix a couple of mistakes that they made um, to make sure they stay on top. I'm not sure where they're at, but they are taking their time. A little halftime entertainment for you. Because I'm running out of things to talk about. Well, here comes Coach Hill out onto the field, so we know that talk is over with. Now we're waiting on the players. All the coaches are making their way out. Two minutes on the clock. Hope they're not waiting for the tunnel to get blown up because it doesn't look like that's happening. All right, here they come. All refreshed and relaxed as they make their way out. Gonna take a couple minutes to stretch the legs. Work the kinks out from the halftime. Sit down in the locker room. So as best I can tell, Brock McLaughlin went about four for nine in the first half. His, uh, I didn't really get a chance to put all these numbers together, but I promise you I will have those for you for the Elgin game next week. Um, speaking of the Elgin game, we are away next week at Wildcat Stadium in Elgin. I still need to get a hold of the athletic director over there to make sure it's okay that we travel to their stadium to bring you that live video broadcast from Wildcat Stadium. I don't think there's going to be a problem, um, but nonetheless, uh, if there is, I will be sure to convey that to y'all. We'll see what we can do about uh, whatever we can do about it. That's, that's the sometimes it's just sometimes it just is what it is with this whole pandemic and COVID thing going on uh, we don't have a lot of choice on what the rules other districts decide to make to uh, not only protect their kids but uh, protect their uh, people that they're in their hometown <laughs> so 13 to 0 see Eagles up on top as they're getting ready to Make it onto the field. The Cedar Creek fight song starts up, and here come your Cedar Creek Eagles to start the second half. The war flag, the Texas flag. In hand. Well, half the team kept going, and the other half stopped. All right, so I believe the Connolly Cougars are gonna start out with receiving the ball to start the second half. They defer to the second half, so they'll get the ball first. So that means the Eagles will kick it away and Henry Jones will tee it up for the Eagles here momentarily. Deep for your Connolly Cougars is Demetrius Gardner. And looks like uh, number one McAnthony Everest. Both standing uh, respectively on their 15 and 20 yard line deep in their own territory. Eagles breaking huddle. 
12 minutes showing on the clock. Third quarter getting ready to start. Eagles on top of the Connolly Cougars, 13 to zero. First drive of the game, 70 yards, two plays. Dominique Mojica break one, breaks one loose for a 64 yard run. And later on in that first half, Brock McLaughlin finished off a, uh, how many play drive was that? That was a, a seven play drive drive and finished it off with a uh, 34 yard run by Brock McLaughlin. And the point after was missed by Henry Jones on a bad snap. Nonetheless, Henry Jones getting ready to tee it off here. Ball's on the 40. And we are underway. Short kick. Drops to 35. Oh, and he's going to drop on it. That's number 88 for the Connolly Cougars. Takes the ball and just smothers it. Jamari Twidwell at the 30. For, looks like the 34 yard line where the Connolly Cougars will start. First and 10. So first and 10 for the Connolly Cougars. They're gonna be moving from our left to right. They're on the near hash mark. And uh, now into the game for the Cougars. Uh, Cor uh, Demetrius Gardner is the quarterback right now for the Connolly Cougars. And he's going to get thrown for a loss immediately on the blitz. That's number 51, William Rangel knocks and rolls Demetrius Gardner for a nine-yard loss to start the second quarter, or start the second half. So he's going to lose eight on that as Demetrius Gardner just could not get anything started before Willie Rangel swallowed him up. Still in the shotgun position, one setback. Looks like number eight now is gonna take their, no, Santos is back in, there's a quick, oh, nice hit by Jose Hernandez again. Second first, same as the first. That was perfect timing by Jose Hernandez on that screen pass and he just rocked the clock of number 10. Roman Mason on that uh, attempted screen pass. What a great read by number 20, Jose Hernandez, as he just clobbered Mason on that attempted reception. He's, he's trotting around a little gingerly. He felt that one. That was a great tackle, great defense by Hernandez as Gardner goes in motion. There's another screen play. He's got a little bit of running room, gets up to the 25-yard line, still not back to the line of scrimmage as the screen play only Gets him back about four yards. That's Demetrius Wa Gardner. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 18 with 10.56 to go here in the second half. Eagles defense coming out strong. Dropping back to punt for the Connolly Cougars is number 17, Santos. Deep for the Eagles is, looks like number 11, Damian Perez. And that was nearly blocked. And that ball's going to get away. And it's going to come down at the 45-yard line and take a Connolly bounce all the way down inside the 35 to about the 32, where the Eagles will start with a bass drop signs. First down, their first drive coming to the field. So three and out for the Conley Cougars to start the second half. I'm pretty sure that wasn't part of the talk they had in the locker room. Eagles have an opportunity to capitalize here early in the second half. First and 10 from the 32 yard line. McLaughlin shotgun position, one setback, two receivers, one top, one bottom, near side. McLaughlin looking to throw a little screen pass and he's lined up and swallowed up quickly. Forward progress is gonna get him about two yards. That pass intended and caught by number three. Josh Roberts. So second down and eight. McLaughlin calling the play. Senior, the center busts out. Shotgun position, one setback, two receiver split top and bottom. Far hash mark, waiting on the snap. There's a snap, McLaughlin's gonna keep it. He's got a little runner room, goes up the left side, breaks one tackle, gets up over top of the 35 to about the 36. Looks like after all that, he's gonna pick up two yards. 
It's going to be third down and six. McLaughlin comes in from the sideline. The play from Coach Hill. Another huge shout out to my son Barton out there taking care of the videos for us tonight. Doing a pretty good job, I might say. McLaughlin fades back. He's going to throw. And that ball's complete at the 40. He's got a little runner. That's Josh Roberts. Breaks out. He breaks two tackles. He's over the 45 into Connolly territory. Still on his feet. Loses the ball, but loses it out of bounds. And it looks like it's going to be placed at the 39-yard line. A great reception and run by Josh Roberts. That ball caught or started out at the 36-yard line all the way down to the Connolly 39. About a 25-yard play. And a Bastrop signs first down, 30 not the 39 yard line, Connolly territory. 8.34 to go in, in the first and third quarter. There's a stutter step and a run by Dominique Mojica. Finds his hole, picks up four on the play. It'll be second down and six as Mojica makes it up to the 35 yard line. So after Connolly's three and out, the Eagles are driving. Four plays so far. Right at 34 yards on the play so far, on the series. McLaughlin waiting on the snap, sends Perez in motion. Ooh, there's gonna be a false start, I think, on the Eagles. That might be on Perez. He may have started a little bit too late. Oh, that's going to be called on the offensive line. Looks like number 65, Deuce Cutshaw, call for the false start. That's going to be five yards. And that's going to take it back to right at the 40-yard line where it's going to be second down and 11 for the Eagles. McLaughlin, shotgun position, one setback. Near hash mark, Perez goes in motion. He hands it off to Mojica. He stutter steps, nowhere to go, and he's going to be brought down for a loss. That play never had a chance to develop as Mojica swallowed up for a five-yard loss all the way back to a four-yard loss all the way back to the 45-yard line. Davin Winston into the game now in the backfield. McLaughlin bringing the play in. Shotgun position, one setback off his right shoulder, three to the top side, one to the near side. McLaughlin looking to throw. Oh, no flag on the play. There was some contact there when Josh Roberts made that cut, but that's an incomplete pass intended for Josh Roberts. And the Eagles are going to have to be forced to punt with 6.52 to go here in the third quarter. Seven-play drive is going to end with a punt. Deep for the Connolly Cougars is number 10. Roman Mason standing on his own 14-yard line. High snap. And McLaughlin lets it go. Nice little punt off to the right side. Oh, a great Cedar Creek bounce. And that's going to be close to the, oh, and it trickles into the end zone. That was nearly pinned inside the one, but that's going to be a touchback, and it's going to come out to the 25. Not a bad punt. The special teams just couldn't get to it in time to pin that thing down. They got a hand on it, but just bounced in the wrong direction as the Connolly Cougars are going to start. Make that the 20-yard line. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. And uh, back into the quarterback position is number eight for Connolly. I still do not have that young man's name. Setback is Demetrius Gardner. He takes the handoff. He goes off the left side. He's got a little running room, breaks the tackle, gets brought down. 
at about the 25, maybe the 26 yard line. We're gonna see, picks up six on the play. Conley player getting up a little gingerly. He gets up under his own power on no timeout. It's gonna be second down and four. There's a handoff. Oh, Gardner breaks loose. He's got some running room. He's in midfield. He's got a couple to beat. He's going to try. Oh, nice, great open field tackle to stop the, stop the run by number 10, Henry Jones for the Eagles as Demetrius Gardner just rattled off from the 26-yard line all the way down to the Cedar Creek 30. 44-yard run for Demetrius Gardner. Shotgun position, one setback. Back off to Gardner again. He bounces to the left side. Oh, he runs into his own player and gives the Eagles time to swarm him and get him down. But he picks up maybe one yard on the forward progress. Conley player down on the field. Gets up under his own power and limps back towards the huddle. Trainers were halfway onto the field to come tend to him, but... There, he's coming off under his own power. Looks like it's going to be second down and nine with 5.36 to go in the third. Plays halted shortly. Gardner picked up one on the play. Second down and nine. Shotgun position. Gardner set back, sends two in motion. There's the snap. Oh, he keeps it. He's going to roll out to the right. There's a flag on the play. He's going to be brought down close to the first down marker, but there's a flag in the backfield. Probably most likely going to be a hold on Conley, but we're going to see as the ball is placed right at the 21-yard line, close to the first down. But it looks like it's going to go against Conley, and they're going to back that one off and just going to replay second down. Now it'll be second down and 14 as they rattle off five. So second down and 14. Shotgun position, one setback, two receivers to the top, two to the bottom. Right down the middle of the field, left to right, one goes in motion. There's the snap, the handoff, and there's the pass. That ball's complete. And close to the first down, and they're going to give it to him. That'll be a Connolly first down. All the way up to the Cedar Creek 20-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Cougars. As the Cougars make it to the red zone. I think that was caught by Mason. Fourteen yards on the reception. First and ten from the twenty. Connolly shotgun position, two setbacks. Wish I knew that young man's name. Number eight for Cougars. Hands it off to Gardner. He goes up the middle. Oh, he breaks a tackle, breaks two tackles, and Gardner's going to get a, get in for the Connolly Cougars for a Connolly touchdown from a twenty yards out. Just a matter of time before that young man broke free, a skilled runner. And that's going to give Connolly that, to break that goose egg. 13 to 6, point after pending. McAnthony Everest with the hold, Santos with the point after attempt. And that ball's on the way. And he squeezes it through as the Connolly Cougars get on the board. 13 to seven, Cedar Creek on top. As uh, four minutes and 31 seconds left in the third quarter. This quarter brought to you by nobody. No sponsors for the third quarter if you uh, care to sponsor. The Creek Broadcast Team to bring you Cedar Creek football. I want to get your name out there. By all means, contact me at the Creek Broadcast Network at gmail.com. 
the Creek Broadcast Network at gmail.com. And we'll get something set up for you. All right, well, Conley gets on the board here midway through the third, or two-thirds of the way through the third quarter, and the Eagles going to need to uh, get something started here as the momentum has shifted slightly in Connolly's favor. Deep for the Eagles, we have Josh Roberts and looks like uh, maybe Davin Winston standing at about their own 13, 12, 13 yard line. Santos getting ready to tee it up for the Connolly Cougars. And it's on the way up the left side. And that ball is going to be brought in by Josh Roberts. He's going to start out at his 15. Oh, he's got a big hole. He's got to the 50. He's going to uh, break another tackle all the way down to inside Conley territory. What a great run back. That's going to be a 45-yard return. All the way back to the Conley 40-yard line. What a great kickoff return by Josh Roberts. What a great return by Josh Roberts to get it up in the Connolly territory. First and 10, that's a bass drop, signs and banners first down at the 40-yard line. Josh McLaughlin, shotgun position, two setbacks. Two to the near side, one to the top side. High snap, McLaughlin has to wrangle it. Gets a quick throw out to Josh Roberts. That's a completion, and he's going to get uh, six yards on the play. That's going to bring up second down and four, another Josh Roberts completion. Young man's got a great set of hands on him. He's a junior. So we get another year for that with that young man. McLaughlin calling the play in the huddle. Senior breaks out over center. We've got Davin Winston and Dominique Mojica in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side. One single coverage to the top. Hand off to Winston. He hesitates. He bounces to the outside. He's got some running room. He's in the 25 to 20. Oh, and he's tripped up at the 20-yard line on a shoestring tackle by number one, McAnthony Everest, to save that touchdown. I'm sorry, that's number three, Averill Houston on the Brock McLaughlin run from the 34-yard line. So he's going to pick up 15 yards on the carry. That's another bass drop signs first down from the 19-yard line. McLaughlin shocking on. Ooh, there's a quick start. That might be an offside. Mojica breaks up the right side, finds a hole. He's going to pick up about three on the play. He's going to bring up second down and seven. Nearly broke that one loose. As the Eagles are inside the red zone, threatening. Three-yard carry by Mojica. End of the game now is Chris Freeman. He's a fullback. Junior, going to give Dominique Mojica a rest, and here comes McLaughlin with the play. 2.46 to go in the third quarter. Conley strikes early, gets on the board with a 20-yard Demetrius Gardner run from the 20-yard line. McLaughlin, one setback, shotgun position, switches to the other side. Three receivers, here's the snap, hands it off to Winston. He's got a little, oh, and he trips over his own feet. He went to stutter step and make the cut and fell. There was nobody near him, but nonetheless, dead ball at the 16-yard line. He's going to pick up maybe two yards. It'll be third down and eight. Or third down and six. Third down and seven. Depends how you look at it. Third down and seven, according to the board. It's like he only picked up one. We'll give him one yard on that deal, yo. All right, third and long, minute 47 to go in the third. Eagles clinging to a six-point lead. Shotgun position, one setback. Laughlin has it. He keeps it whole up to the middle. He has a little bit of a hole. He's going to get up near the free. He makes the first down marker. What a great second effort by Brock McLaughlin. All the way down to the seven-yard line. That's going to be first and ten. That's a bass drop sign. Cedar Creek first down. 
First and goal. It's about an eight yard run for McLaughlin. He's gonna put it up to the Conley seven yard line on the far hash mark. Minute 20 to go in the third. The Eagles threatening in the red zone. McLaughlin shotgun position, one setback with Winston off his left shoulder. Two receivers split top and bottom. Winston keeps it, he breaks over the five yard line. He's aiming to the goal line, Gavin Winston. Cedar Creek touchdown. Point after pending, that puts the Eagles on top. 19 to seven, what a great drive by Cedar Creek. Six plays and about 50, uh, about 40 some yards. I can't add them up that quick. That ball's up and it's good. Henry Jones sticks it through to put the Eagles on top, 20 to seven here with one minute, four seconds left to go in the third quarter. Cedar Creek 20, Connolly 7. We'll be right back. At Roscoe State Bank, we're more than just banking professionals. We're your neighbors. Family owned, the bank first opened its doors in Roscoe, Texas in 1906. Since then, we've expanded to new locations, including Bastrop. We strive to be the best neighbor possible to those we serve, offering great products, the latest in mobile and online banking, convenient hours and more, all with the highest level of customer service because that's what neighbors deserve. Roscoe State Bank, building community one neighbor at a time. You are listening live with the Creek Broadcast Team at SHN Sports. All right, back here at Memorial Stadium where the Eagles just, tag, just uh, capped off a seven-play drive to get them Seven more points. It's 20 to seven here with a minute four left to go in the third quarter. Henry Jones getting ready to tee it up. The young man so far is uh, five for six on point after this season. He missed one earlier, it was on a bad snap. He got it away, but it was just too low under the crossbar. But nonetheless, he tees it up at the 40. And Connolly has two on their 15 yard line. And here's Jones. Nice kick. Oh, nice kick. All the way back to the seven yard line as that ball is picked number five. And there's going to be a D slows him up. And that ball's going to be tack. He's going to be brought down. That's number five. That's Jordan Hardeman. That's the first time I've seen that young man tonight as the special teams swarm him to trap him inside the 20. It's going to be first and 10 for the Connolly Cougars at their own 12 yard line. Well, that was actually a really, really good kick by Henry Jones, one of his longer ones. Uh, it seems like the young man, as the time goes on, he gets more and more confident, and that leg gets stronger and stronger. So the Eagles have the Cougars pinned deep at the 12-yard line. Long ways to go. Shotgun position, two setbacks. Has the handoff. They're going to give it to Gardner. He's going to juke up to the 15 over to about the 18 yard line. Maybe the 19 they're gonna give him. That's gonna bring up second down and three yards. And that's Demetrius Gardner. Quick snap, Gardner again. Oh, he's got nowhere to go this time as Logan Latouf grabs him and slings him forward to get him that first down. So that's gonna be a nice second effort by Demetrius Gardner to pick up about five yards on the carry. They had him stop before the first down marker. But then Logan Latouf wrapped him up and then he was able to power forward past that first down marker. It's first and 10 for the Conley Cougars at the Conley 23 yard line. Shotgun position. Two receivers sends one in motion. Hands off up the middle, Demetrius Gardner. He's got some running room. He's gonna get. He's gonna take somebody to catch him as Demar Gardner is gonna stretch it out, and he's gonna break the plane, and that's gonna be a touchdown by the Conley Cougars. As Demetrius Gardner rattles one off from the 23-yard line, that's gonna be a 67-yard 
for a 77 yard touchdown run by Demetrius. Point after attempt pending. There's a snap in the hold, and he gets it on the way. Did it go through? No. He... There's a stoppage in play. I think he missed it, but there's a penalty flag. So defense got called on the offside, so they're going to re-kick it. They're going to move it half the distance to the goal and try it again. So he did miss it, but the defense was offside, so they're going to get another crack at it. With uh, zero time on the clock, that's going to end the third quarter. Uh, I think they're going to try to get this kick off before they change ends as the Eagles make some mass substitutions. So Cedar Creek was off sides <clears throat> on the point after. So they're going to get an X. They're going to go for two now that they're a little bit closer. And they're going to bring in the offense. Shotgun position is Santos at the helm. Takes the snap. He rolls out to the right. There's a flag on the play. And that's going to be caught. But it looks like it's going to be blown dead as offense. illegal shift. shift. That will be a penalty. So... They'll accept that penalty and take the down, and I believe that's going to be Cedar Creek ball turn. I'm not sure what's happening right now. So looks like they're going to back it up, and they're going to try the point after again, it looks like, on the failed two-point conversion. I'm not sure how that works. They got a penalty on the two-point conversion, yet they're still able to – I'll have to look that one up. So the ball is going to be placed – Snap to the 15-yard line. That ball, oh, and that ball's blocked. There's our special teams. Ball's live. He picks it up, but he's smothered quickly outside the 20. I got one right there if you want it. Uh, these ones right here. Here's one. Here's one. You can have that one. All right, so after all that debacle, still no point after. So that makes it 20 to 13, a seven point spread for the Eagles. As uh, the first point, or the first uh, point after was a Cedar Creek penalty. And then the two point conversion, after being a little bit closer, was failed on a Connolly penalty. And the point after was blocked. I didn't see who made that corner, but that's going to end the third quarter, and that's going to bring up the fourth quarter, and we are in 12 minutes closer. And this district opener, 13, or 15, or yeah, 13 5 a Division II. Cedar Creek Eagles and the Connolly Cougars shaping up to be a match here. Eagles coming out pretty well. Already put some tallies on the board for the second half. They're playing the win for sure as the Connolly Cougars are not going into the, into the darkness lightly. Ball's placed on the 40 deep for the Eagles. We have Josh Roberts in. Looks like... Uh, Davin Winston on that far left side, far right side. And there's the kick, and that ball's going to come short. Winston has it at the 20 yard, 22 yard line. Has a few blockers in front of him. Bounces still on his feet. Still going. He's on his feet. On the 30, breaks to the opposite side, breaks another tackle. This time he meets one at the 35 yard line that brings him down. That tackle by number 28. I don't have that young man on my right. Oh, yes, I do. Aiden Ramirez. He's, these numbers aren't in order. That could be the reason why. Maybe number eight doesn't. Nope. Still no number eight. So first and ten on the bass. There's a flag on the play. I'm not sure what that uh, sig uh, signifies, but it's at the 40-yard line. And trying to see who it's going to go. Might be a holding possibly on Cedar Creek because 
Davin Winston was running for his life and all over the place, so it only stands to reason that somebody got a little, little grabby. So it's going to be a 10-yard markoff against the Cedar Creek Eagles from the 36 all the way back to the 26. I'm not sure what the infraction was. I didn't hear. I didn't hear what it was. But nonetheless, they're starting at the 26-yard line. McLaughlin has the shotgun position with one setback. One goes in motion. Mojica. McLaughlin keeps it, lowers his head, gets up over the line of scrimmage, still going. He's going to bumble forward over top. Oh, and that ball's whistled down as number four for the Connolly Cougars, Trayvon Williams, ripped it out of the McLaughlin's hands. But they're going to mark him down after a four-yard gain, so McLaughlin carries it with a second down and six. We got a little lucky there. I don't know how down he was. I guess he only got to be down enough. McLaughlin shotgun position. Winston off his left shoulder, two to the top side, one to the near side. Hands it off to Winston. Changes direction. Gets down over the 30 to about the 31. It's going to pick up one yard. It'll be third down and five. Keeping it on the ground, but there's a penalty marker on the field. We don't have a 22 on the offense, so I'm not sure where that one came from. So it's going to offset. They're going to replay the down. 10.54 to go in the game. Those were offsetting personal fouls. I'm not sure where he kind of made that number up because there was no 22 on the field, maybe 21 maybe. Anyway, it's uh, second down and six from the 30 yard line. McLaughlin takes the snap. Oh, and he's a little busted play. Oh, and he's just got to do everything to scramble for his life. Not sure what happened there. It's like the ball was snapped, but the offensive line didn't move and McLaughlin was kind of swallowed up. And he's getting up a little gingerly all the way over there at the 25-yard line. Can't afford for this young man to get injured right now. As number four for the Eagles, Brian Allen is the backup quarterback. He's a sophomore. He starts warming up down here on the near sideline, the Cedar Creek side, as uh, everybody takes a knee and the stadium gets a little quiet for the young man. 10:25 showing on the clock. Eagles clinging to a seven-point lead, 20 to 13 over the Connolly Cougars. And he's up under his own power. And is he going to come off? He's got to come off for at least one play if they call the injury timeout. So we're going to see what happens here as trainer Jeremy Tark escorts him off the field. And Brian Allen is coming in to take the reins. And his... Uh, as far as I know, his first effort of the 2020 season, he may have got some reps down in the Seguin. I wasn't there for that game, but I know he didn't play during the Aikens game, at least not at the quarterback position, as he comes in to try his hand at uh, protecting the Cedar Creek lead. All right, shotgun position, Allen at the helm. One set back, two receivers split. One top, one bottom. Here's the snap. Allen fading back, looking to throw. He's going to air one out right away. He's going to come back to it. Oh, and that ball's intercepted by Everest. And he's bringing it back inside the 20. He's still dragging down at the 15-yard line. That ball's fumbled, but he's down before he fumbles it. And the first play of Brian Allen's high school career as a varsity quarterback throws an interception. And that's not what the Eagles needed as the Conley Cougars end up inside the red zone. 
And they're going to do everything they can to try to get Brock McLaughlin healthy back on the field. So there's going to be a 10-yard penalty assessed uh, on the return. I'm not sure what the call was. I'm having a difficult time hearing the referee. But that's going to bring the ball back all the way to the 35-yard line where it'll be first and 10. For the Conley Cougars, number eight for the Conley Cougars. Two setbacks, three receivers split, two top, one bottom. There's his hand off to Gardner. Gardner bounces off a couple of tackles. He's a big boy. He gets down over the 30, inside the 30, to about the 27-yard line. 20, yeah, 27-yard line, 28-yard line, where it'll be second down and three for the Conley Cougars. Shotgun position. There's the snap, hands it back off the Gardner again. He jukes back and forth and was able to make up some yardage, get over top of the first down marker all the way to the 19 yard line. He's gonna pick up four. And uh, they don't really need a passing game because they have Demetrius Gardner to take care of it on the ground for him. Nine minutes to go in the game. Now you gotta figure out a way to stop this young man as the Cedar Creek defense starts to show a little wear and tear, getting a little tired. Shotgun position, here's the snap. Handoff again, that was gonna be a screen pass and that's gonna be broken tackle. This time, Josh Hernandez, or number 20 for the Cedar Creek Eagles. Yeah, Jose Hernandez couldn't get there. That time it bit him, uh, another Conley Cougar first down at the 12 yard line. I didn't see who caught that, but nonetheless. First and 10 for the Conley Cougars. One goes in motion, shotgun position, two setbacks. Right hash mark, there's the snap. Little low, hands it off to Gardner. Oh, Gardner's got nowhere to go this time, but he's struggling forward. Maybe to make the line of scrimmage. No, he's gonna get a little drop for a two yard loss. It's gonna be second down and 12. 8.16 to go here in the fourth. Eagles clinging to a seven point lead, but the Connolly Cougars are threatening in the red zone, near the red zone. No, they're in the red zone, my bad. Ball's placed at the 14 yard line. It's gonna be a short post game show, folks, just to let you know, because I'm trying to add all this stuff up on myself is a little difficult. There's the snap, screen pass. Oh, in and out of the fingers of number two, Jaqueen McGee does not come up with it. He was the intended receiver on the screen play. Third down and 12 with 7.48 to go. Eagles need a stop right here. I don't know what kind of leg their place kicker has, but they would put them roughly in the, roughly in about the 32 yard range if the ball stays where it's at. Shotgun position, one setback with Demetrius Gardner is the young man with all their yards and touchdowns this second half. Sends one in motion. Here's the snap. He fakes it, he's gonna throw it. Oh, and he's got a caught and it's a touchdown for Connolly Cougars as McAnthony Everest gets the 14 yard stab. Point after is going to tie it. They may go for two here. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's going to be nullified. Take it back. No soup for you as that touchdown's called off on a Conley penalty. I need to scratch that out. I need to get rid of that screen because we're not changing any score quite yet. As Conley's going to have to take another stab at it all the way back to their own 19-yard line. So it's going to be... Third down and about 17. Shotgun position. Number eight, quarterback for Conley. Still don't know his name. One goes in motion. Gardner has it. He breaks one tackle. He's got a little running room. Oh, he's got nowhere to go. Tie him up. He got him in the backfield. Tie him up. There you go. <laughs> Didn't know if the young man was ever going to go down, but nonetheless, he's going down for the loss. And that's going to bring up fourth and really long. 
And the Cougars don't have much of a choice but to go for it. It's out of their field goal range, I'm sure. Especially with the way our special teams are working. The ball is going to be placed at the 25-yard line. It looks like it's going to be fourth down and 22. They got 23 with seven minutes to go. They're going to go for it. Fourth and 23. Shotgun position. One setback. Three receivers, one in motion. There's a the snap. It's a low snap. He's going to throw it out. That's going to be way over top. That's intercepted at the goal line. Should have let it go. And here comes uh, Jose Hernandez is bringing it out. Still on his feet. Brings it all the way out to the 18-yard line as the Eagles get an interception. To end that drive by the Conley Cougars. They were threatening and threatening hard. We need to take this momentum and bring it to the promised land for the Cedar Creek Eagles as they will start first and 10 for a Bastrop signs first down at the Conley, or at the Cedar Creek 28 yard line. There's a flag on the play, so it looks like we're gonna back it up even more. Not sure what the penalty was. But nonetheless, it looks like a, no, he's gonna keep on going. I'm not sure what happened here, but that ball's going all the way back to the seven yard line where the Eagles will start first and 10. I do not know what happened there. But nonetheless, Brock McLaughlin is back into the game for the Eagles, set back with Davin Winston, two receivers. Single coverage here to the near side with Josh Roberts. Here's the snap, hands it off to Davin Winston. He bounces to the outside, he's got a little bit of yardage. Gets up over top of the 10 yard line, another flag on the play. Holding on the, D, on the offense, so that's gonna back him up five more. So it's gonna be replay first down, all the way back to the two yard line. Oh, they're gonna half the distance to the goal. 6.31 to go, Eagles holding on to a seven point lead, 20 to 13, a lot of time on the clock. Eagles need to get it. Need to get a first down right here on this drive just to get it out of the zone. Get it out of the red zone. It's first and 10 all the way back to the three yard line. There's the snap. Davin Winston's got some running room. He's up over the 20 to the 22 yard line and there's that first down, that Bastrop signs first down as he breaks loose on a 20 yard run right up the middle. Davin Winston to get an eagle first down. All right, no flags on the play, so that's one step forward. Without the two steps back, 5.58 to go here in the game. Eagles on the move. Got a little breathing room now, and all the way up to the 22 yard line, first and 10. Shotgun position. McLaughlin, one setback, sends one in motion. Dominique Mojica tucks it and gets back to the line of scrimmage. All right, Dominique Mojico is able to get back to the line of scrimmage before he was swallowed up. It's going to be second down and 10. Clock ticking, 5.13 on the clock. Shotgun position, one setback, three receivers, two top, one bottom. He hands this one off to Mojica again. No, it, McLaughlin is going to keep it off the left side. Oh, he had some running room, but he had a, somebody on the secondary. He had Everest closing in on him, so he takes the slide. And it looks like his bottom hit right around the 24 yard line. So he's going to pick up two. It's going to be third down and eight. Here comes Davin Winston back into the game along with McLaughlin in the play. 20 to 13, Cedar Creek. 
trying to make some things happen here. They're holding to a seven point lead. Four, 16 to go here in the game. They're definitely using up some clock. There's a snap. McLaughlin looking to throw. He's under some pressure. Oh, he breaks a tackle. He gets a little bit loose. He gets up all the way to the 29 yard line before he's brought down. He makes some ground, but he comes up three yards short. And that's gonna bring up fourth down and three. As he scrambled for his life on that one, he actually made a mountain out of a molehill there because he was dead to rights in the backfield, but he was able to break loose and pick up five and make it a little bit of breathing room. 3.58 to go. Here in the fourth, he drops back to punt. That's a good punt. That ball's gonna be caught at the he called a fair catch. I didn't see him call the fair catch, but nonetheless, it's blown dead at the 37-yard line. 30, yeah, 37-yard line where the Connolly Cougars will start first and 10. Last series for the Connolly Cougars was throwing an interception to uh, Jose Hernandez. And they're going to start out first and 10 from the 37-yard line in their own territory with 3.48 to go. 62 yards, 63 yards to get to the promised land. Shotgun position. One set back to receivers. Santos back in the game for the Cougars. Oh, he's wrapped up quickly. That ball handed off to Gardner. And he's going to make the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up seven down and second down and 10 as that ball was handed off to Gardner for no gain. Three twenty-seven clock is ticking. Santos drops back, shotgun position with one setback. Gardner off his left shoulder, two to the near side, one to the top side. He's fading back to throw. Oh, way too high. As that pass intended for Everest, McAnthony Everest. That's going to bring up third and 10 for the Connolly Cougars. Just a bit outside. Eagles could use a huge stop right here. Third and 10. Whistles blowing everywhere. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure if that's. Oh, it looks like they remarked the ball. Well, miraculously, they gave him a yard. So it looks like third down and nine. Santos shotgun position. Here's the snap. Ooh, that's a quick show. And it's going to be outside. That ball's caught by Gardner, and he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage as the Connolly Cougars are facing a fourth and really long, probably about 14 because he's thrown for about a three or four yard loss. Is there a flag on the play? I don't see any flags, but you know, it's fourth down and it looks like 12. Fourth down and 11, according to the young man on the PA system. All right, one last chance here for Santos. He fades back, he's looking to throw. He's under pressure and he takes a hard hit. And Oh, you got to be kidding me. That ball was not catchable. I don't understand why that's going to be a pass interference. But nonetheless, there's a flag on the play, and it looks like the ball was not catchable. But they're going to call a pass interference play maybe unless it was something else. Yeah, that's going to be first and ten for Conley on a pass interference on an uncatchable ball. The ball was thrown out of bounds. was not catchable, yet the pass interference call was still called. 2.27 to go, and the Eagles, or the Conley Cougars, get a little saving grace. First and 10 from midfield at the 50-yard line with 2.27 to go. Shotgun position, hands off to Gardner. Gardner bounces to the outside. He breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet. There he goes over top of the 20, over top of the 35 to about the 30-yard line. It's going to be first. And 10 on a 20 yard, 21 yard carry. Shotgun position. 
Santos hands it off. That ball's going to be blown dead as the Conley Cougars start a little quick. It's going to be a five-yard penalty. They're going to back it up. <laughs> 217 shown on the clock. Conley Cougars threatening a little bit. Let's see what the penalty is. All right, encroachment penalty called on the Connolly offensive lines lining up in the neutral zone. Can't do that. Going to back it up five. It's going to be first down and 15. Santo shotgun position, one setback. Right hash mark. Waiting on the snap. Hands it off to Gardner again. He bounces nowhere to go, and he's hit quickly. And... Looks like he's actually going to lose a yard on the play. He's going to get back as a, Conley calls a timeout to stop the clock right at two minutes and seven seconds. And it looks like, yeah, they're going to be like, it's going to be second down and 16, it looks like, for Conley. And Conley's going to take a timeout. That's the first one of the second half. We're going to take a timeout, too. You're listening to the Creek Broadcast team on SHN Sports. Brought to you by Roscoe State Bank. At Roscoe State Bank, we're more than just banking professionals. We're your neighbors. Family owned, the bank first opened its doors in Roscoe, Texas in 1906. Since then, we've expanded to new locations, including Bastrop. We strive to be the best neighbor possible to those we serve, offering great products, the latest in mobile and online banking, convenient hours and more. All with the highest level of customer service because that's what neighbors deserve. Roscoe State Bank, building community one neighbor at a time. You're tuned into the Creek Broadcast team on SHN Sports. All right, back from the timeout. Teams are back on the field. Two minutes and seven seconds showing in the fourth quarter. It's going to be second down and 16 from the Cedar Creek 37 yard line. Shotgun position, one setback. Two receivers near side, one top, one goes in motion. Playing off that right hash mark. Oh, he's hit right at the line. That might get that ball. Get that ball. All right. Well, he's going to be hit. An incomplete pass. Great pressure by number 44 to force the incomplete pass. Aiden Gustafson, defensive lineman. He's a senior. I think he plays that defensive end position. But he got around there quick to put the pressure on Santos. That's going to bring up third down and 16. I almost... Wish we had instant replays. I don't know if his arm was going forward or not, but judging by where the ball landed, it looked like it was. Oh, that's going to be a fault something. That's got to be the offensive line. That just, uh, that just looked cruddy all the way around. Oh, called against the Connolly Cougars. Another break for the Eagles. That's going to back them up five more yards, so it's going to be third down and 21. So third and 21, two minutes on the clock. Shotgun position, Santos waiting on the ball. One set back to the near side. There's the snap. He's fading back to throw. He's going to air one out. He's got a, oh, no flag. Great defense. Great defense by Damian Perez to break up the McAnthony Everest opportunity. And everybody's kind of meandering around. I don't see any flags. I think everybody's just getting exhausted. Nonetheless, that pass intended for Everest, incomplete. That's going to bring up fourth down and about 21. So they're going to force to go for it as Santos drops back in the shotgun position. He's got Gardner off his left shoulder, two receivers to the near side, a minute 55 to go. One goes in motion, waiting on the snap. Santos is looking to throw it. Oh, there's nobody there. That's incomplete. That's going to be a turnover on downs as the Eagles for Cedar Creek hold their ground. And they're gonna take over first and 10. As there's a Connolly player on the ground, it looks like number 78 for the Connolly Cougars. Let me see who that is. That's Jordan Marino being tended to. A 
We're going to take an injury timeout. You're listening to the Creek Broadcast Team on SHN Sports, live from Memorial Stadium, Cedar Creek 20, Conley Cougars 13. Hey, folks, did you know for over 22 years, Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply has been the go-to for professionals and DIYers to use for all their landscape projects. Established in 1998, the family-owned business has served Bass Drop and surrounding areas with the quality, affordable landscape materials that they deserve. Their huge selection of materials will help you drive that creative side of you to help you create that dream landscape. For more information and details, visit BassDropStone.com or call Jaime or Gabby at 512 303 5060. It's Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply. Our reputation is rock solid. You are listening live with the Creek Broadcast Team at SHN Sports. All right, back from the injury timeout. The young man's being helped off the field by the Connolly trainers. All right, Cedar Creek gets a turnover on downs. They're going to start the Bass Drop Signs and Banners first down marker at the 42 yard line. Welcome back to the Bastrop Stone and Material Supply broadcast booth brought to you by Roscoe State Bank. First and 10 for the Eagles. Uh, don't need to sit on their heels here. They need to try to pick up some yardage here because it's a uh, buck 50 or a minute 50 is a long time for the Conley Cougars to make something happen. And there's a snap handoff to, uh, to Dominique Mojica. He bumbles up and stumbles over the 45 to about the 46 yard line. He's gonna pick up four yards. And there is a timeout call, looks like by Cedar Creek. It's gonna be second down and six. As Coach Hill wants to talk about it. Calls Davin Winston over. I'm sure he'll be part of the play here shortly. A little bit of speed and quickness in that backfield that the Eagles could use right now to try to spread their wings a little bit and open this field up. Ball sitting at the 46-yard line with a minute 40 left to go. 20 to 13, Cedar Creek on top. I don't think I changed the fourth quarter, did I? Yes, I did. Oh, look at me. I want to thank all our sponsors for uh, helping us out this season. We got Roscoe State Bank, Bass Drop Signs, Bass Drop Stone and Material Supply, Lori Tuggle State Farm Insurance, Schlotsky's Deli, and Uncharted Adventures out of Kyle. We thank you, we thank you, thank you very much. There's a snap, and going to the outside is Davin Williams. He cuts back in over the 50 to 45. Oh, the ball's loose, and goes out of bounds. What a lucky break by the Cedar Creek Eagles, or for the Cedar Creek Eagles, as Davin Winston kicked, coughed up that ball right at the Connolly 40-yard line, but not until after a 16-yard run. That was a lucky bounce on the, on the count of the Eagles to bounce out of bounds as there was a Connolly player right there actually touched the ball and it bounced off of his hands out of bounds. So Cedar Creek retains possession. First and 10 on a bass drop signs and banners at the 40 yard line. Shotgun position, McLaughlin, one off his left side, two receivers split. Hands it off to Dominic Higa, he bounces outside. Keep going young man, he bounces off a little another tackle, gets up over top of the 39 to about the, right at the 39 yard, or 36 yard line, I'm sorry, at the 36 yard line, looks like he's gonna pick up four yards on the play. That'll be second down and six on the Mojica carry. Well, that's gonna be a Connolly timeout. I take that back, the last timeout was called by Connolly because they're showing zero timeouts left on the clock and Cedar Creek still having three. My apologies, I thought Cedar Creek called that last time out. So Conley Cougars are out of timeouts. There's a minute 22 left to go and the Cedar Creek Eagles are looking at a, uh, a positive start in this district opener to start this, uh, this crazy 2020 football season that uh, everybody is uh, having to take a big bite of that sandwich too. I mean COVID and the pandemic and everything but everybody's making the best of, best of what they can with what they got so hopefully everybody's staying safe out there and keeping your distance and wear your mask and all that cool stuff shotgun position 
Second and six, one goes in motion. There's the handoff to Mojica. He goes up the middle. He runs into a wall of everybody, and he bumbles over top of the 35-yard line inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. He's going to pick up a couple. As the referee calls timeout, as looks like one of the Connolly players being tended to. Number 28, Aiden Ramirez. Clock stop at a minute nine. It's going to be, uh, should be third down and short. So looks like about third down and three as Mojica. Picked up two yards on the play. Smart thing by Coach Hill. He's keeping the ball on the ground. Running the clock down now. 22 seconds on the play clock. 49 on the game clock. He's probably going to wait till this gets all the way down to zero or one. He's going to call timeout. And that's just going to probably seal the deal for the Cedar Creek Eagles. As he's going to call timeout and bring the, have Josh or uh, Brock McLaughlin bring in the play. Right at the one second mark on the game clock, Coach Hill timeout. takes the timeout. 30 seconds left to go in this game, and the Eagles theoretically only have to snap the ball one time to put this one in the books. What a great start for the Cedar Creek Eagles as Coach Hill wants to make sure everybody's on the same page here on this last uh, last time out. It's been a long time since the Eagles started out with a victory. That year we went to the playoffs when we were in that, we were in that Austin district maybe against Travis and Reagan and all those guys when I think, I can't remember, I'd have to go back to the, to the schedule and look on that one there, but uh, 30 seconds to go, third and three. There's a snap. Oh, McLaughlin takes a knee. That's going to bring up fourth down and three, and the clock's going to run, and Conley can't stop the clock. So that's going to do it for the Cedar Creek Eagles as they knock off the Conley Cougars as the clock winds down 15, 20 to 13. Cedar Creek Eagles takes out their Bastra or their District opener against the Connolly Cougars. The Eagles start the district play one and zero, and they are excited, and so are their fans. Let's hear it for the Cedar Creek Eagles. All right, congratulations, Cedar Creek Eagles, 20 to 13 over top of the Conley Cougars. This uh, broadcast brought to you by Roscoe State Bank and Bastrop Stone and Material Supply Press Box. Bastrop Signs, Uncharted Adventures. Lori Tuggle State Farm Insurance. Schlotzky's Deli. And I forget one in there. And Rod, I, think I, I think that's all of them. We're going to take a short break, come back with a short post-game wrap-up where your Cedar Creek Eagles just knocked off the Connolly Cougars 20-13. to 13. We will be right back. Fast Drop signs and banners are the people you need to see. Located at 248 Highway 304, Bass Drop, Texas. 14 years in the community, the family-owned business continues the path of quality and affordability. Go to BassDropSigns.com or call 512-332-0803 for details. They want you to remember that we print it all. Uncharted Adventures is the house of untraditional entertainment. From a smash room, axe throwing, a bar and lounge, and an area coming soon, two lanes of airsoft shooting gallery for the kids of all ages. We are growing to expand your untraditional entertainment. For details, go to unchartedadventures.com or at Uncharted Adventures on Facebook to book your next adventure. That's Uncharted Adventures, the home of untraditional entertainment. 
Bastrop Signs and Banners. Bastrop's original large format print shop bringing you quality and affordability to the sign printing industry. With 14 years as a family owned business, Bastrop Signs and Banners continues to impress the community with four Best of Bastrop Awards. When it comes to quality craftsmanship, honesty and integrity, there is no compromise. They are Bastrop's only five star rated print shop. Bastrop Signs and Banners located at 248 Highway 304 Bastrop, Texas or you can find us at BastropScience.com. You can call us at 512-332-0803. You can talk to Tim, Maria or Matt to get your order started. Bastrop Signs and Banners, we print it all. I'm in a state of caffeination, got all my fingers shaking, must have been my large Americano, mochaccino, macchiato, now the family's gone to bed, and that's my favorite time to get some tips on better rates, cause my state farm guy answers late, and even when it's not my agent, someone's standing by, so patient, getting coverage questions answered helps me to relax, get to a better state, state farm. The Roscoe State Bank strongly supports the efforts of the Bastrop Chamber of Commerce and its We Believe in BISD campaign, which unites the community and local businesses in support of the Bastrop Independent School District. Bastrop and Cedar Creek Schools have great teachers helping great kids achieve great things. At the Roscoe State Bank, we do believe in BISD and in its mission to provide pathways with pride and purpose for all of its students. Find out more at WeBelieveInBISD.com. Hey friends, if you're looking to beautify your home or create that perfect backyard getaway, Bastrop Stone and Material Supply has been a family-owned business since 1998. Located at 1433 Highway 71 West of Bastrop, they're open Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Because whether you're a professional or a DIYer, it is the only stop to make for all your masonry and landscaping products you will need to make that dream happen. It's all at Bastrop Stone Material Supply. Whether to create that perfect patio, that outdoor kitchen, fire pit, garden, or beautiful rock home, Fast Drop Stone and Material is your one stop you need to make for all your natural landscape materials. Visit BastropStone.com or find them on Facebook for more details. Call Jaime or Gabby at 512-303-5060. Fast Drop Stone Material Supply. Their reputation is rock solid. We hope you enjoyed the live presentation of Cedar Creek Football. You are now listening to the post-game show brought to you by Schlotke's Deli, an original Austin eatery. Located at 492 Highway 71 in Bastrop, right in front of Walmart. The Elga location is 1131 Highway 290 East. Go to Schlotsky's.com slash Texas slash Bastrop or slash Elgin for details. Use Schlotsky's to cater your next event. Use DoorDash to have it delivered right to your front door. That's Schlotsky's, the original Austin eatery. You are listening live to the Creek Broadcast Team at SHN Sports. All right, welcome back to Memorial Stadium where your Cedar Creek Eagles just knocked off the Connolly Cougars in the district opener 20-13 to on an outstanding offensive and defensive an uh, answer or effort by the Cedar Creek Eagles. Uh, the Connolly Cougars were threatening there uh, in the second half and they were able to uh, hold off the Connolly Cougars and force the uh, uh, force the turnovers and force the turnover on downs to cap this one off. A great uh, management of clock of the clock here towards the end of the end of the game by Coach Hill uh, and the Eagles. Um, the Eagles, uh, I don't have all the stats calculated, but I promise you I will have something for you for the Elgin game next week at Wildcat Stadium. So uh, we're going to cut this post game short because they're going to kick us out of here pretty soon. But nonetheless, it's been a long time since uh, we've been able to say the Cedar Creeks are 1-0 and in district play to start out to 2020 uh monstrosity of a, a pandemic year that we are calling covid so we want to thank everybody for tuning in um i was up here by myself tonight so i hope i made it at least entertaining a little bit and kept you guys uh, in the game and excited and on the edge of your seat as best as i could um i hope that everybody uh stays safe i hope that everybody uh continues to social distance and take care of their families and on behalf of the creek broadcast team and all of our sponsors tonight from the roscoe state bank Bank broadcast and the Bastrop Stone and Material Supply broadcast booth. I'm going to bid you guys a good night. This is Pistol Pete live from Memorial Stadium. Good night.